Hello, everybody. This is the Stronghold Podcast, and I'm here with Fuck a Fuzz. Yo, what's up, bro? What's up, my man? How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. I'm, 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 uh, um, I'm, I'm looking at this gym and I'm looking at the mats and I'm like, damn, this is, it's like, it's, you know, they're, they're waving candy in your face, but you can't fucking take it. And I was <laughs> like, fucking, I was like, wow, you can't do anything here except for like, you know, solo drills with two meter waves from people. So that sucks. Yeah. That must, that must suck for someone like you that's been doing BJJ for so long and now you can't even. Well, I'm yeah. curious, are you gonna, are you gonna, cause you're mainly a BJJ guy, I guess. Do you do Muay Thai boxing, no. stuff like that as well? The, okay. So I started off, uh, I think about like maybe four years ago training Muay Thai. So I was uh, I was at Evolve and I was training Muay Thai there. And I mean, after you pass a few levels of just doing striking and stuff like that, you know, um, I got I got interested and I, I, I like the sparring. But then you start to get hit and then you realize that, OK, I, if I'm getting hit this hard during sparring, I don't know if I want to compete mm -hmm. because it's going to be like 10 times harder than this. So I told myself, like, all right, I'm never going to compete in Muay Thai because, like, I, I don't want that kind of pressure on me, you know, because those, those guys, man, they're tough, man. You know, <laughs> like, yeah. like you look at the Muay Thai, like, you look at the push kicks they take in their fucking, you know, sometimes on the outside, I mean, they, they might not be feeling it because they're, 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 you know, it's adrenaline and stuff like that. But you looking at a push kick from outside, you're going, fuck that. Oh, you still feel that like, shit, bro. Like, you still feel that shit for sure. I was like, fuck, I won't be able to take that shit. Those <laughs> leg kicks, bro, those liver yeah. shots. No, those, like, shin to shin ones. Mm, oh, my God. Yeah, so I was nasty. like, nah, I'm not, I'm not doing any of that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, no, no, that's, that's, that's good, man. I mean. I'm too late in my life to want to get hit in the face. I'm, like, I'm good, you know? It's the body ones that really hurt you, bro. I'll tell you right now, after quarantine, I don't want to take those liver shots, bro. I've, no. been, I've been abusing my liver for the last three months. I don't want to take any of those body yeah. shots right now. So then I, I, I looked over at the BJJ guys and I realized that, oh, okay, there isn't any striking, but there's like, uh, there's, there's, there's time, there's a time limit. Okay, may, maybe if, not if you're doing like, um, uh, like like leg lock stuff, but like for the amba stuff, you know, there's there's time for you to like tap, right? There's like a little bit of time in the pain before you really get hurt. So I was like, all right, you know, that seems a little safer, yeah. you know, and and that seems a little bit more long term. So I'll do that. And like yeah. the the head contact, right? That's the big one. Yeah, it's like the direct head contact. Yeah. You're not really getting too much of that in BJJ. You, you know, you know what scares me the most about like like you know I I would love to be consistent in BJJ enough to get to like a brown belt level when I'm like forty or forty plus or something and and and, and be able to uh, still compete at that level too, like for leisure. But I'm looking at those fucking heel hooks, man. Dude, that shit is scary, man. Ah, oh, dude, it's a myth. <laughs> it's a myth, bro. I'm telling you. <laughs> Dude, I let my heel hooks, white, uh, my white belts heel hook each other. Really? Yeah, man. Because my only rule, like, if the students come in to train and yeah. they want to heel hook, my only rule is if you're going to heel hook a student, they have to know what it is. Right. Right. That's my only rule. If right. they know what this is and, like, which way to turn and which way to not turn, yeah. as long as they know what it is, they kind of can be chill. And then, of course, you never, ever crank them. And then the yeah. second rule is if I get it and I go, I bridge a little bit and you don't tap, I let it go. I'm not going to uh, – if you don't tap, I'm not going to play that chicken game with uh, you where I'm like, bitch, I'm going to break it. Like, never. Uh, right? Oh, man. Like, but, dude, we all do it. I've never, ever seen a serious injury from a heel hook in my gym ever, and I've let my white belts do it as long as I've been teaching. No, like, like – you know, when you're rolling in that intensity, right? And then you just like sort of like, you know, you're, 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 you're gunfighting your legs, you know, like, bum, 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 and then like suddenly you get that position and you're trying to, you know, like, you don't know like in that fit of intensity if you would ever, because I know the, 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 the allowance is very small, right? Mm. Before that thing snaps. So like, so I've, I've, um, I haven't actually seen anybody get hurt by that in, in the gym, but I've, uh, back when I was uh, training with my friend, he he experienced that with a few people and and you know they they had partial tests yeah. okay yeah and 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 that shit was scary to me so so that was like the only fear that I was thinking like okay if I mean I would love to get more advanced in this but if I get it, I might have to face this <laughs> I don't know I, I think it's honestly <laughs> dude it's more like uh, awareness yeah and and ego you know because okay. again that's why I make my rules like first is awareness you have to know what's happening because if I do a heel to you and you don't know what it is right. you might spin into it. It's been uh, the wrong, something like that could happen, uh, right? Or the other thing is like, I do it to you yeah. and then I'm at the point where I know maybe it will tear your ACL or something like yeah. that and you don't tap 
Should I keep going? Well, of course oh, not. No, no. So, so your student has to know if I get you to that point and yeah. I'm there, I got to let it go. I got to catch yeah. and release it. But I still want to train it, right? Right. Or conversely, never do it to people who don't know what it is. Right. So if those you can guys, do that. Those, those um, white belt guys, they, 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 they know when. Like, do they understand the mechanics of that? Because yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, they yeah. Oh, they'll, they'll release it, man. I mean, I've never had a – I've had some t- torn ACLs, never in uh, my classes, but I've had them – some students competing but it was always wrestling it's never actually oh, really? doing yeah oh, okay. wrestling is where i've seen the vast majority of my students get injured hold up how, how do you tear your acl wrestling well the most co- the most uh likely way for anybody to get injured is falling body weight oh okay so it's like because there's the least amount of control when you're actually on your way to the ground usually right right so right. it'll be you know someone goes for a single and then they try to sprawl really hard yeah. and the knee will twist or like yeah. I've, I've injured my own acl doing a, a knee slice Ah. Like my, my knee wasn't fully out, right? You know how you got to pop the yeah. knee free and then you yeah. cut the knee to the side? Yeah. So it was like a little bit in there and I turned anyway. Pop! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so it's like, but I was, was like, I can fucking go. Competition? No, that was during training. Damn. And then, uh, but I've seen a few guys with the, the lockdown half guard. Mm-hmm. You, know, you know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People stretching that lockdown half guard. Yeah. That, that puts a lot of pressure on the knees. That's totally yeah. fine. Even though I've seen some ACLs go from that. Again, not in my gym. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, man, we're a... You know this you see this area like we're kind of an expat yeah, area yeah. we have competitors and all that kind of stuff but most yeah. of the people that come here are like their dads and their office yeah, workers yeah, they and they're guys kind of who just want to train and yeah. they're not gonna i'm not gonna let them come in here and just fucking yeah. goon each other and shit yeah. no <laughs> you know there's some I mean? guys that like you know straight foot locks are the the leisure that we, the, that we get as white belts you know <laughs> like like we get to do the straight foot locks and i try to like I try to i try to see if i can get that every time i roll but with some of the guys as, as you said if they're like above a certain age and they're just there once you get that position and they're like you know what i'm not even gonna fight this <laughs> yeah. just that. and I, I i haven't even gotten it in yet but it's more of like i don't think it's worth it to fight this because something might happen yeah. <laughs> and then, well and then the other thing is like you know you, you can tap if you're just uncomfortable if someone's putting a heel look on you and you're it's all about gradual exposure it's yeah. like uh, any any phobia or any fear right. that you would ever have in your life yeah the trick to overcoming it is not to go directly and face it it's to gradually expose yourself to it a little bit at a time of course. right yeah, yeah, so yeah. if you're a person who wants to train heel hooks but you're kind of sketch on it and like you love your acls and everything yeah, like that yeah, yeah, yeah. then the trick is to Train with them a little bit. Mm. Someone puts you in it, you tap early. Boom, no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once you tap early to it 50 times, your uh, margin of error will start to grow. And you will know, like, okay, I can go a little bit longer now. I can go. Yeah. It's the same thing with, like, a, a choke, right? Yeah. First time somebody puts you in a choke, you're like, fuck, you're going to freak yeah. out. <laughs> but after you get put in it a thousand times, you're like, bitch, I'm going to go. Once I get there, my vision's blacking out. Yeah, Only yeah. then will I fucking tap oh, you. Dude, you know I'm saying? fucking blacked out my last competition, man. But it was just, uh, like, the, the, the two seconds before I tapped. Yeah, but it was more of like the first, well, watching the matches back, I think when I had my first match, I, 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 I fought the whole five minutes. That was SG BJJ. Yeah, SG I think I saw Open. you there. Yeah. yeah, so I fought like the whole five minutes and I was just exhausted after that. You know, I was completely exhausted. Also, because I was trying to make weight. Was that your first competition? No, that was my second okay. competition. Second. So the, the, the night before that, I, I, I was uh, maybe a, a kilo over. And I didn't know I could just sleep that shit off. Yeah. You know, I didn't know I could Three just... 3 to 500 grams you'll lose in your sleep. Yeah, I didn't know yeah. I could sleep that shit off. So I went for a run, bro. So when I went for a run, the next day, I don't know if it was electrolytes or, 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 or whatever. It was like maybe a salt deficiency or I don't know what it was. But after the first match, I was so beat that the second match... Uh, I started having cramps, mm. like, you know, in, in my calves and stuff like that. And I couldn't, I put the guy in my half guard and then I was like, yeah, man, I can't move anything. So I was like, maybe I can keep him here, you know, and, and see, see what I can work for uh, here. But like, eventually he got out because, you know, my legs weren't working. But that was, yeah, that was, that was scary because like, you know, when you get into that competition too, because, because he got my back after that. And then he had that collar choke thing on me, yeah. you know, and you have this confidence. You're like, I think I can last. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to play that game for too long. <laughs> they were like, I think I can last. I think I'm okay. I can breathe I here think, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'll be good, man. Like, no, this feels kind of comfortable. 
you know and then you start because it's a blood choke right you start you start blacking out a little bit and i was like oh shit i might die <laughs> and then and then I, I tapped and then when i tapped it was just immediately like, it was like yeah. tunnel vision you get out and you're like oh you shit. lay there for a second and you're like okay oh, i'm still here <laughs> yeah and then i went to the table and then the lady at the table that was taking the points was like you know you blacked out right i was like yeah i know but you know but did anybody else see me black out <laughs> I said, did anybody else see me black out? I said, nah, nah, because we had to pay attention to you. It kind of just looked like you tapped. And I was like, all right, good, right, good. Because I don't want to, like, yeah, black out. <laughs> but well, well, I mean, the reality of the chokes is, like, you know, uh, for example, I, I do uh, refereeing as well. Mm-hmm. Of course, I res- referee jiu-jitsu and stuff, too, but also MMA, mm-hmm. and I've refereed uh, kickboxing and stuff like that. Right. And uh, I did, when, if I'm refereeing amateur MMA, mm-hmm. you always, the referee goes and they talk to the fighters before, so they kind of let each other know what mm-hmm. they're looking for and mm-hmm. when to keep moving, all that kind of stuff. And I'll always say, if it's if you're in a choke, mm. I'll let you go to sleep. Oh, if you don't tap, okay, right? I'll give you the uh, the yeah. out to yeah, do that. Yeah. I'm not gonna like pull you off oh, if no, you're in, right. No, of course yeah, you wouldn't, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Because do do I'll give you the right to go to sleep. But <laughs> if somebody's putting you in a gnarly heel hook, an arm bar, and you're not tapping to it, an amateur <laughs> pro, then you have to tap. Like that's yeah. your responsibility if yeah. you're a pro. But I'm not gonna let a 20 year old amateur <sighs> kid get his arm get broken. So yeah. it's like I tell them in there, this is the difference between a choke. A choke, you can go out for a second. I'm going to pick your arm up. I'll pull it apart. You'll be fine. Yeah. But if you're a young 20-year-old kid who's got an amateur fight that wants to be tough, like yeah. if I see you in that bad spot and you're yeah. not going to pull it, I may yeah. step in. Yeah. And I don't want to hear any complaints because I'm yeah. telling you now, better to not get there. Yeah. Then complain. Oh, referee, oh, I was. I could have escaped that heel hook. Yeah, they, like, were rather, they were rather. They were But they would rather say that yes. than say that they got caught. You know, it saves their little ego and shit. But it's like, fine. I'll let you be mad at me if it means you've got a working fucking ACL. You know what I mean? It's like hey, hey, I'll, hey, I'll, yeah. I'll give you that kind of thing yeah. because chokes are generally safer. So yeah. if you want to be a tough guy in the gym and when, during a choke, you can. Yeah. You might get a little embarrassed if you're yeah. waking up fucking staring at the ceiling. I know, I know. But, you know, if someone puts you in a joint lock, whether yeah. it's an arm, a leg, a shoulder, you have to tap early, number one. Yeah. And number two, you have to not go ape shit on it and get just fucking bridge into it and yeah. where you can hurt somebody, Dude, right? Dude, it was crazy because I've never blacked out ever in my life like that. Yeah, so when, when that happened, I, only at that moment, I was like, oh shit, this is what it feels like. It's like, damn. You know, because it really was tunnel vision, man. It was yeah. real tunnel vision. The edges come in. Yeah. And you that get guy, numb. You get this weird, like, vibration yeah. kind of sense, and right? And that's the weird thing, too. He burned bullet into my back. It wasn't like a normal white belt taking a bat. Like, he knew some other stuff. He probably was so, you know, this probably really close to his blue or something, you know. So I guess he he um uh, he burned bullet to my back. So like that was I didn't even see that move coming, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I didn't even see that. So so yeah, he he was he was he was definitely the better the, the better opponent. But it was just at that moment of time because the ref came to me and said like, "Are you okay?" When I was d- deep into that college joke, <laughs> and I went, yeah, oh, 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 I went like, yeah, I'm good, because I really thought that yeah, I'll survive this, you know, I won't tap, you know, in the moment five minutes, uh, it was okay, you know, but nah. <laughs> Dude, one of the most relatable jujitsu moments, especially competitor moments, that anybody can say is, "Are you all right?" <laughs> yeah, I'm good. <laughs> fucking going. Out. Everybody knows. Like, I think I'm good here. And then <laughs> their fucking dude. shoulders slump, and they're out. And then somebody's uh, holding your fucking legs. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's so fun, man. Like, like the I've competed twice, and and and, and um, I find it really, really fun. Like, I would love to like advance more in the competition too, because it really gets you into that mind frame. But like, I think it's fun. Even as a hobby, like, I only do it as a hobby. But even as a hobby, it kind of like. It gives me some kind of, you know, if you don't got a goal, you know, now you have one, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, for that. Even if it's a small goal, it still keeps you going a little bit, you know? Yeah, you go to train for that, there's like a reason that you want to come, you know, and then you, the, the cutting weight stuff, you know, you know, if you don't have the discipline to lose weight, now you got a real reason to lose weight, yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, it's the, it's the physical discipline, it's the craftsmanship. You know, I always say the jiu jitsu, it's a craft. Yeah. Of course, it's, a, it's a martial art, right? Yeah. But it, it's literally a craft. It, to me, it's no different yeah. than learning how to be a play a guitar or playing yeah. because become a singer or whatever mm. like that's your that's your craft and when you do it to the competition level it's always interesting right because nobody's gonna go yeah. against you in training like the people do in competition so it's yeah. like it hits this other level oh, where you're like shit your body's tense yeah everybody's nervous you gotta piss you feel like you're gonna shit yeah. yourself like all of those sensations come over you and you're just like yeah. here we go <laughs> Dude, that really it's 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 so much adrenaline you know and it's so much like because he's as, he's as um, nervous as you are. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, you're nervous and he's nervous. And that's, that's like a, 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 
even in that setting, it might not like on the outside. If you're looking at it from the outside, it's like, all right, you know, it's not like a packed stadium or anything. But like those guys that are experiencing it there, that's like, <laughs> you know. What were your? Uh, I'm curious. Like, what were your takeaways after after a competition? Like, how did you find the experience? Like, what were you know? What were your general thoughts after you you done them? I. I was actually very intimidated by Jiu Jitsu because the to me like the learning curve was was pretty difficult. Like I mean I'm still getting smashed, you know, but but it was I think at, it really taught me to like oh okay I can't underestimate people based on how they look because there's oh, yeah. a lot of these strong looking guys that are getting smashed by like 14 year old girls. Yeah, <laughs> you know? and a lot of these nerdy motherfuckers would fuck you yeah, up. Yeah, they would <laughs> really the fuck you up. Yeah, yeah. So I was like oh shit. So my perception of how like a man or like a tough guy looks immediately shifted you know it's not those like fitness model guys anymore oh, and now yeah. it could be anybody that's a beautiful thing my man yeah yeah that's now a beautiful now thing. it could be any now like if i look at an old man and i was like oh, I'm a f-, somebody says i'm gonna fuck up this old man I say, ah you don't know that <laughs> yeah exactly. i don't know if you know that you know that, that old guy might be a wrestler yeah, or a sambo guy because i've rolled with some skinny old guys and i've been fucked up but <laughs> I've, I've been in their side control and not like like i couldn't figure out why the pressure is so hard and i can't get the, get it out of it because like technically i can live this guy you know i would think that i can live this guy but for some reason i'm stuck or even the women dude you roll yeah. with the good girls that's eating some crow for the first yeah. time, right? If you have a standard view on sort of masculinity, bro. and then you roll up to a jujitsu gym and some little fucking fifty-year-old girl bro, let me, fucks you up. Let me tell you the the story. Of the first time I ever got into a triangle, bro. The first time I got into a triangle was a fourteen-year-old girl. A fourteen-year-old <laughs> girl got me to a triangle, and this was when I was like beginning as a white belt. So like you know, you still got that white belt ego. <laughs> you know, you still got that. I want to be a tough guy. Was it new fit? Yeah, uh, it was a new fit. Yeah. Was it Serafina? Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. Of course. Okay. <laughs> I used to teach Serafina when she would come. Yeah, to the yeah. So, and shit, so, so, so she knew that right away, Serafina. So she's this li- little girl, right? So, so I'm over there and I'm like, oh, you know, I'm a lot bigger than her. So I'm like, oh, I'm gonna be gentle, man. You know, you gotta be a gentleman <laughs> and be gentle, right? So we pair out with her. And then she's got me in spider guard, and I'm like, I'm gonna last this. Look at this. You know what? You know, I can just pull my arm out of this. So let's just relax. And out of nowhere, out of nowhere, she shoots. Boom. She shoots for it. She shoots for it. And I'm like, oh, okay. I guess I'm here now. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I guess I'm here now. And then she inches, inches, and then she puts Starts my arm pulling across. That head down. She didn't pull my head uh. down yet. She was just like, you know, she was inching, she was inching, she was getting her position, and I was like. All right, I want to smash. Did you know what was happening at that point? Did you know what a triangle no, was? Like, no, I, okay, I knew, but I didn't know what to do. Oh, so okay. I knew that it was going to triangle, but I didn't believe that she could get me in there because I was like, there's no way, like physically, I thought that I could get choked out by a 14-year-old. There's no way. I didn't think there was any way. So I was like, you know what? If I maintain this, or if I put my arm here and try to like stop her legs from moving or something like that, you know, try and like give me some airspace, I think I'll be good, right? So then she... She starts like very slowly moving to her side, you know, she starts moving to her side, she starts holding her shin and then she starts moving my arm across and I'm, and I don't know if this was a compromising position or not, but I was like, "Mm, I don't know if this, and then the airway starts getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and I was like, I think I'm fucked. I was like, all right. So at that moment, at that moment, I was like, all right, if you're going to exert any form of male strength, now's the time. (laughs) Now's the time. So I, but it was too late at that point. She got it locked in, right? And then she put my head down. She she pulled my head down. I was like, oh shit, I'm about to tap to a 14 year old girl. (laughs) (laughs) That's fucking awesome. And I did. And I, the moment I tapped right after that class, dude, it just, it fucked with me a little bit. It, 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 It more of like, I was like, wow. I started, I don't know. Plants the seed. It was, the yeah, seed yeah, it was there, really right? confusing. It was like, oh, <laughs> shit. Like, oh, okay, this is something different. And then I told myself, like, hey, man, you know, if somebody as small as her can do something like that, you know, if I get to what she knows, you know, I could probably do a, little, a lot more, you know. Mm. So, so that was really the motivation. Yeah, yeah but damn, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what that is, brother? That's yeah. enlightenment. Yeah. You, you, you got jujitsu, martial arts, enlightenment, man. Yeah, that was so beautiful. I, I, I wasn't mad or anything. Yeah. I wasn't mad. I was because, I mean... There's no reason to get mad. Like it was what it was. You got reality. You got caught. You can cry if you want, but it still <laughs> you, happened. You can't get mad, but the fact of the matter is, you got caught. Yeah. So now, now, now it's time to think forward. So I was sat down. I was like, oh, okay, um, yeah. So, so that was really amazing to me that someone of her size could put 
someone of my size, which is possibly twice the size, mm. in a dangerous position, you know? So I was like, wow, what is this? You know, and, and she's been training for a very long time, I think. Mm. So I was like, wow, okay, so, you know, I, I, wanna, I wanna know what this is, you know? <laughs> this, this is dope, yeah. So yeah, yeah. but, but it, it still takes so long to, and, and, and there's so much to learn that you're, 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 you're dumb for a really long time, <laughs> yeah. you know? And a lot of the times I don't really know what the fuck's going on. You know, when you're rolling, you're like, oh, okay. Bro, I'm still like that sometimes. <laughs> I, get in the, I get in some of these new positions. I'm, I can't fucking bear and That white belt who bear and you can bear and better than me. There's just, there's too much to know, man. And you have to choose, like, what, what, what moves are you interested in? What style do you want to go down? Like, gi, no gi, do you want to do both? Do you want to do MMA? It's like every path that you choose foregoes another path right so yeah do you compete in mma too yeah you do yeah. you do last time i fought was in 2017 here in singapore at sfc oh okay okay mm. so then do you stop competing already or do you still compete at your level well ever since we ever since i started head coaching and then we right. opened up this gym i haven't competed because right. i'm just uh focused on building the business and right all that kind of stuff right i right. competed when i was working at trifecta because we had a nice big team of of instructors that could train me and uh -huh. everything. Here I'm the head coach and it would be tough to yeah. find the training partners. But honestly, dude, like m my inclination is much more geared toward training and teaching than fighting. Mm. I don't love fighting. It's not my favorite thing to do. <laughs> I did it just to see what's up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just to kind of test the waters, see what my skills are. Yeah. But it was purely like intellectual. Like, let me see what's up here. Let me yeah. see if my shit works. Yeah. And then, uh, but I mean, I've competed in jujitsu and wrestling and MMA and yeah. kickboxing and everything, but I, I, mean, I like the training. Yeah. And as you know, when you're in the competition mode, yeah. everything changes. Yeah. And like for me, if I have a competition coming up, even if it's jujitsu, like now the training fucking sucks. You're tired all the time. It's fucking miserable. Yeah. You're getting smashed. Coaches are screaming at you. Yeah. You got to lose weight. And it's just yeah. like the whole magic that I feel when I come on the mats yeah. when I'm training normally is like gone. Oh. It's like now it's like, dude, this is a grind. It's already a grind anyway. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But now it's like fucking, it's not fun anymore. Right. I understand. So I understand. when I come in here and I'm training, like I'm loose, I'm having fun, right, I'm relaxing, right, right. like this, this is my escapism. And then mm. when I'm doing that, like even though this is my job, it feels kind of like it's not fair that it's my job. You see, that's Cause, weird because I do that to escape. You know, a lot of people. Yeah, do. I do the losing weight and I do the training. I don't mm, know how that. I do that to escape from my job. <laughs> <laughs> Well, a lot of people, you know, the, the counter side is, yeah. I know some people who won't fucking train unless they have a fight or unless they have a competition. Yeah. Because for them, the reason they train is to fight. Whereas oh. for me, it's the exact opposite. Like, I want to be in here on the mats experimenting, fucking around, train, yeah. doing training. Yeah, yeah, for, yeah. So for me, like, the fight is just like, whatever, I'll try it. But right. some people, like, I can't get them to come into the gym if they have a fight book. It's like, motherfucker, you need to train in the in-between. Like, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they're so focused on the competition aspect of it rather than the, the training for training. There are guys like that, though. Yeah, I, I've seen, I've seen mm -hmm. guys like that. Yeah, and I, I, it, I, it's so easy to get into that mentality sometimes, you know, because... Um, I think they see an objective, you know, and, and when the objective is taken away, they're like, oh, then why, why am I doing this? Yeah, but, they're directionless. Sort yeah, of. yeah, but, but you know, I, I guess, I think enjoying it is, I guess, the, the mm. best the best way. I mean, like, I still enjoy it, you know. Even, and that's different for everybody, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, some people don't want to compete, some people want to compete yeah. every fucking day, and then... When I first started, like, uh, training, like, a year ago, uh, training consistently a year ago, I was like, oh, I don't know when I'm going to get my blue, man. I wish I'm, I'm going to get my blue. I, I, I want to get my blue so much. But now that I'm competing, I'm like, nah, I'll take my time, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a long game, dude. I was like, I'll take it's my time. It's, it's fine, man. That blue can wait. <laughs> yeah. It's a fucking grind, dude. I mean, I went, it, white to black took me about 15 years. Damn. Yeah. I started in, I started jiu-jitsu in 2005. And I'd had a wrestling background already before that. Wow. So I'm, a, I'm a fucking slow learner, bro. Wow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Wow. It's a grind. I mean, I spent, I spent six or seven years as a purple, but mm. I was in college then, so I was mm. in and out a little mm. bit. And then I spent like five or six years at Brown. Was there so, a I mean, popular jiu-jitsu scene back then when you were, I mean. Oh, no, dude. No, right? My coach was a blue belt. There wasn't a black belt. In, I'm from West Virginia. Yeah. So there wasn't a black belt or brown belt in, in the whole state. I mean, in 2005, I mean, dude, you're dealing with like UFC 50 something. Yeah, yeah. So like yeah. there were no black, there's no Brazilians in fucking West Virginia. Yeah. And so nobody even has a way to get through the lineage. Yeah, and they right? don't even get, like they, they, they can't even access a lot of information. Not like now where you have all these DVDs. Yeah, you there know, wasn't YouTube online. tutorials back then. Holy shit, there's so many of those DVDs. Like, Dude, my, my instructor was a, white, uh, was a blue belt. He got his purple like a year or two later. Mm -hmm. And like seeing him roll with people as a blue belt, you're like, this is a fucking wizard. Like, like the idea, the concept of a black belt was so far beyond even my reasoning because mm. I'm watching this blue belt wreck everybody. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I'm just like, God damn, like, couldn't even imagine <laughs> what a black belt would do to somebody, right? It's not even in my point of reference. And, like, I was a decent wrestler, like, yeah. athletic, young, strong, yeah. and then these people would still fuck me up. And I'm just like, yeah. this is ridiculous. So then I was, like, just, I'm, I'm like, yeah, 16 yeah, yeah. years old salivating at the idea of someday getting my black belt. It's like, yeah, got, yeah. like a superpower, bro. I gotta have this. Like, I gotta have this. And then 15 years later, you're like, ah, it's, you know, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> well, it's also, like, now there's a market for this. Like, now you can own a gym, a jiu-jitsu gym. Yeah. MMA's popular. There's yeah. an avenue toward doing this as a career. Like, my concept of, like, I was thinking, like, could I do this as a career? Could I make a job out of this? Mm. But back then, my concept of, like, being a martial arts coach is that yeah. fucking nerdy guy in a gi at 40 years old teaching, like, kids classes. Yeah. Like, And I'm just like, that's what I thought it was. It's like, now jiu-jitsu is fucking cool, right? MMA is cool. Like, it actually is yeah. such a technical thing. But back then, I was just, like, imagining myself being, like, yeah, with a bunch of kids running around, which I still do right. a little bit of, but... <laughs> But I'm teaching them something that's fucking cooler, oh, you know. Man. You know, you know that meme was like, "Oh, you didn't just cheat on me. You made you, you made him wear my gi and do karate noises." <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's like, um, what's the Danny McBride uh, thing where he's the karate instructor or whatever? Mm. You know what I'm talking about? I don't know what he's talking about. Ah, oh, shit. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, it was like the the parody of what a martial arts instructor was oh, like in right. the '90s or the early 2000s. Oh, you see that McDojo shit on 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 um on Instagram? Oh yeah, oh, man. I fucking love that <laughs> shit too. I love all that shit. All the fake martial arts, bro. I watch that shit all day. <laughs> That's fucking the chi. <laughs> it has to push you, and then you know it'll fuck up your chi, and then you you move. And these guys just fall, and I'm like, wow, dude. They still believe it to this day. Yeah? They st I got into a, an argument, not an argument, yeah. but just like a, a disagreement with, a, when I was a teacher working at the Korean school, yeah, yeah. had this guy over one time, and he was trying to tell me about all these like 50-year-old masters that live in the fucking hills of China yeah. could beat up all of these like MMA fighters. Uh -huh. And I was like, what? <laughs> and he's like, well, you know, they put 50 fucking years in, and they have like their zen, and, their, and I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? You think that like... These old dudes can just have mastered martial arts <laughs> to the point where they're going to, like, like athleticism still plays a role. Yeah. And you think, what, this kung fu is going to beat, like, yeah. that's not going to stop a choke. No, it's He's not. like, yeah, but he's going to do, and I'm like, dude, he's going to hit a pressure point. Like, I hear this one all the time. Like, the <laughs> death touch like, and shit. I do pressure points. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, like, pressure points is like, I'm a black belt in pressure points. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But even, like, the death touch chi shit, it's like, oh, he'll hit you in this way. And I'm just like, dude, this is like. I love it, man. <laughs> still, people still believe. This is like a younger guy, too. Really? Still, still believe this wow. shit. Well, you got to give him a trial class then, you know? Like, give, give him, you know? He, would, he wouldn't come in. I no, there's those guys that say they master the death arts. I love those dudes, man. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I'm mean, a master mostly the death arts. Yeah, they were, <laughs> they're, they're, they're like chip eating, like fucking with the big belly out. I'm a death art fighter. Like, right. You know what they say? Yeah, because they'll be like, no, no, no. My shit only works to the death. I can't, it's like MMA, can't, sparring doesn't work. It don't, only if I can kill you will it work. Okay. It's like, oh, that's fucking convenient. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Only works to the death, man. <laughs> oh man, that's hilarious. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, uh, I've never. I've. I when I was a kid, there were a couple of people that came up to me with those things, but I never. Um, the moment I started watching UFC, uh, the UFC one with Ken Shamrock, was mm. that, that then then my uncle was like, uh, because I was into WWE and I actually thought me too. Then I too. really thought that WWE was fighting. Me too. <laughs> and then I mean now as I grow up, I'm still a fan, but I'm a fan of the theatrics and I'm a fan of the storyboard and story writing because all the fans in in pro wrestling know what it is now, you know. So, but yeah. in the '90s when we were growing up yeah we, we thought that people, shit was people were still like Shh, you go get mad if people were like it's fake you're like fuck you it's fake <laughs> yeah so so when, when I watched the UFC I think the Ken Shamrock was the one with oh yeah he fought Hoist right in UFC, yeah, one, UFC yeah. 1 right so that's the one wearing the fucking wrestling yeah. speedos and shit so that's the one and my uncle looked at me and said see that that's real fighting you know because that that, that fat guy that got kicked and then his tooth yeah. came out so, so that soccer kicked soccer kicked right yeah and that was the one moment where my uncle told me, he said, see, that's real fighting. You get kicked in the face, you sit down and nothing. So what year did you watch that? Was that like right around when it came out or was it years later? I don't know. I was in, what year did that come out? Because I remember Jeez, watching it when I was in primary school. That would have been like, I think the first UFC was like 93, 94 Oh, no, then like I must have watched a, DV, a VCD that no. was like dated uh, a lot later than that. But but I watched the the, the one where, where they, they, they brought it uh, back, like UFC, and I was like, what the hell is this? And I saw that, the soccer kick, and I was like, 
said, damn. Then my uncle was like, yeah, that's real fighting. Yeah, so then <laughs> from that day onwards, it's like, all right. Yeah. You know, yeah, this is, yeah. This is so when did you really get into it and like start watching it? And uh, I mean, do you, do you catch them now, the, I, I, the fights? I, I, or are you mostly a practitioner? I... I go to the gyms a lot. I, I, I practice it, but I, 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 it's very hard for me to follow sometimes uh, what, what's happening, I think. Um, I know the recent card was really good, you know, mm. with Cody Garban and those guys. Yeah, yeah I know they, they had a lot of finishes that fight, but I, I, for some reason, I think it's because I'm not subscribed to ESPN or, any, or Fox, yeah. Fox, sorry. Uh, so, and and uh, I can't, you know, I, I can't wake up and just watch, I gotta buy a pay per view and stuff like that. So I'm, or maybe stream it illegally, mm. which I don't wanna do. Yeah. <laughs> so you just catch like the big ones yeah, and shit. Yeah, yeah, I try to catch like the that. big ones. But I really want to, con- um, I, I should really continue watching because one of the reasons why I, I wanted to get into this was well, for a lot of you guys, maybe the career option was to teach, but for me, it was like the career option is might be able to commentate or call yeah. a fight at some point in my life. You know, like yeah. I want to be able to call a fight at some point in my life to know yeah. enough to call a fight. You know, like right now, if you put me there, I, I don't fucking know what's happening. No, I mean, I know the strike, the basic striking stuff, but once once they're on the ground, and I'm like, mm, okay, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that'd be a great thing to do. Yeah, man. yeah, that's, yeah. That's yeah. a good avenue to do because you yeah. do a lot of you do a lot of. Uh, not commentating, but what's the word I'm like presenting in? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, and and it's fun. So and when I see like the commentators like Joe Rogan and these guys doing UFC, like he because because he's such an experienced uh, practitioner, like he knows you know what this guy's supposed to do. So it gives you that value add, you know, when you watch a fight. So I hope like the the the, the fighting industry will like last long enough for me to be able to reach that point, you know. But you don't know, man. <laughs> I don't. I don't think it's going anywhere, bro. I think it's around. The, it's around the state. It's carnal, right? People like yeah. to fight, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. It's universal. It's universal. And like MMA, is still, this is quite interesting, right? Because even like I was talking about growing up as a young kid, like these yeah. markets just weren't there. Yeah. Now the UFC selling for fucking four billion dollars. Like once putting on shows everywhere. Yeah. Like I feel like it's yeah. it's definitely around to stay. Yeah. How amazing is it that the human species, which is a fucking violent species just in its own nature, yeah. has got to the point where only in the year twenty. Mm. Well, 2000, 2000 did people yeah. really learn like what kind of fighting is best? <laughs> like what kind of unarmed fighting is best? We were so uh, we, we were so comforted by the myth. We put a man on the moon before we knew what a triangle <laughs> choke was. Like how is that possible? Yeah, because the <laughs> myth of the 50 year old sensei, you know, is yeah. more appealing than actually learning how to fucking you know uh, retain guard. <laughs> uh, exactly. <laughs> Like seriously, like we had a fucking God microchip re- before we had a heel hook. God retention, is bo- <laughs> God retention is boring, man. I want to know that I have powers. Exactly, and I can kill you <laughs> and just fucking shoot people, and then their students go flying and everything. Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah. You're right, man. That's it's very carnal to be. The, the human species really wants to see who's like at the top of the food chain in terms of like physicality, right? Like, like I think that's why people like to watch fighting. And I've realized that if you, you know when someone can kick your ass, they get treated a lot differently than somebody who can. Yeah, <laughs> I'm curious what your what your catalyst was like. What what was it that made you be like? For, I mean, you had your experience with Serafina, which is yeah. like that kind of stuck it, and then yeah. you really start to realize. But what was it that kind of got you in the door? And was it like weight loss? Was it like no. You want to be stronger, the skill of it. No. What was it for you? I was really, okay, if I could be completely honest, it was, I, I saw it as like a, a self-investment for me to be able to have something to show for when I'm in my 40s. You know, like if I started now when I'm in my 40s and hopefully if I'm consistent, I'm in a more advanced version of where I am now, then at least that's, that's a seed that I planted that has grown knowledge-wise, you know, once the years have passed, Right. And, and I want to be able to do that so that when the young guys come in, I'm like, oh, right. I'm, I'm, I can still be the more experienced guy to show you around. Yeah. You know, I don't want to be a 40-year-old saying back in my day I could kick someone's ass. As if your life is over when <laughs> yeah, you're 40. Yeah, I, and like I hate that shit. Yeah, that's yeah, crazy, yeah. right? So, so I thought... Uh, and I wanted to also keep active, but that, that it was more of like trying to invest some. Like I, I looked at it and I was like, okay, so if I invest in this, maybe once I reach forty or forty-two or forty, I'll have a you know a considerable amount of knowledge that I can share with with the with with the younger, more inexperienced guys. And at the same time, maybe enough knowledge that you know if the comedy thing doesn't work out, like, you don't know where it leads, right? You know, it's just. Not just the comedy thing doesn't work out. I think it's more of like the options. There's more options that I can go to at that point of time. And, and you know, and also, to be honest, right, I love the fact that I can just go to another country and then go, go to like a gym 
and yeah. then ro- all right first of all i'm gonna say this real quick like jiu-jitsu guys not the friendliest guys when you first meet them okay they're not they're not they don't give a fuck about you they don't want to talk to you before they roll with you yeah. <laughs> right yeah, they yeah, gotta yeah. roll with you first and then say hi <laughs> you know like this changes as you go up the belts <laughs> really yeah i mean if i roll up in a foreign gym like they're like bro let's go oh, they want right, 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 to right. take you out they want right. white oh, the new white belt comes in and everybody's just like who's this motherfucker? <laughs> you know it's like it, it does change a little bit the more uh, okay, okay. Come up. that's good to know then that's good to know because everywhere i go like when i went to hong kong most of the gyms I'm, okay but uh, shout out to espada gym actually they were really nice you know they're really nice but those guys don't really talk to you when you f- they first see you. You know, yeah. you come in with your gi and your white belt. They're like, all right, man. All right, fuck this dude up. <laughs> all, right. all right, here we go. Is he going to yeah. spaz on one of our girls again? Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah, but then after they roll with you and they're like, oh, you're all right. You know, yeah. It's once you share that, once you yeah. share that little battle, then yeah. they want to take you out. Yeah. They want to be friends. You're like, oh, I'm traveling yeah. from here. And they're like, oh, it's cool, bro. And then they become really friendly. Totally. Yeah, then they become like super friendly. So, so. You just got to get that roll out of the yeah. way. <laughs> you got to get that shit out of the way. <laughs> you got to get that shit. I got to know you're a good dude. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Before, so so when I was in Hong Kong, I, I did a comedy tour, and when I was in Hong Kong, like that was the best time that I had in terms of jujitsu uh, training because there's so many gyms and it's all so near, you know, near my hotel, and the show was really nearby. The show was at this club, I think it's called the Fringe Club or something in Hong Kong. So the 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 the, the club was like maybe five minutes walk away, and then the gym was five minutes walk away, and then the hotel was a five minutes walk away. So it was like a triangle. Of, dude, that's all I did. I woke up in the morning, had a little bit of breakfast, went training, train, 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 came back home, shower, did a show, get next day, repeat. I was living in heaven, bro. <laughs> nice, that's it. That's the dream for you, hey? I was in heaven, bro. Yeah, and then I, I yeah, yeah, and a, a lot of the Hong Kong guys were really nice, and and and, and that was. And that was when I realized that, oh, shit, man, I could, I could do this for a long time because this is really, really enjoyable. Yeah. Still got my ass whooped, though. Oh, yeah. That, 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 doesn't, that doesn't ever change, bro. I've been doing this for 15 years. I still get my fucking ass whooped. Yeah, like, yeah man. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. Oh, I mean, that, you know, there's always a bigger fucking fish out there, man. Yeah. There's always somebody. You know, you get people that roll up in here that come in. Like, a lot of my best friends and coaches in Singapore, like, Major Overall is one of my boys. I mean, he's, a, right. good, he's a good black belt. Yeah. He's, my he, hair comes uh, in here. He's a black belt. Dude, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. me and him have been training partners for six seven years yeah, yeah, so yeah. we went through purple belt brown belt together we're both black belts both owner of the gym my hair comes in here he's one of Leke's black belts like you know those guys roll up I ain't gonna not What's stop like rolling with them when you guys do like black belt black belt open rolls and, and, and stuff like that like how do you guys like what, what, what what's the environment like like you know totally depends on who you're rolling with. As, <laughs> that also doesn't change that doesn't if, change as no, if, if the Brazilians roll up you're fighting for your life you know <laughs> They, they pull harder, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, they yeah, get yeah, after yeah, yeah. it. And it just depends on kind of who you are. Like, I tend to see that, like, uh, and this is general, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, you know, the Brazilians come, and they're going to roll hard. There's no easy rolls with them, rarely. Yeah, Unless yeah, you're, yeah. like, tight with them, you know them, you yeah, can kind of yeah, play. Yeah. Like, foreign, uh, you know, here at least, expat people, like, if I roll with Major, or I roll with my hair, or I roll with some of these other guys. Oh, like, I know my hair. We're, <laughs> we're, yeah, my hair is awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, a, he's a black belt. He comes in here and trains oh, sometimes. okay. Um, when I roll with them, it's much more like, We'll let each other do stuff. We're not like, we're not giving stuff up, but we're, we're willing to experiment. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas like, you know, you roll with the black belts. They're not letting you get a position on them. Of course. Where, where it's like, but if I roll with some other guys, like my hair comes in here, we're practicing leg locks on each yeah. other. Like if both of us, if that's not our forte, the inclination would be to stay out of yeah. it. Right. But we want to see what's up. So we're willing to play maybe the C or D game yeah. just to kind of grow and experiment. Yeah. Like you don't want to experiment with the Brazilians. They're going to fuck you up. How, <laughs> how come is it when, when like, when you go up in the belts and you guys compete, you, the, the entry to your positions to get the positions it's a lot um, slower well, I wouldn't say slower as in, as in um, less energy but it's kind of like you know you, the way you get your grips and everything it's not as as aggressive as like if I were to do it or if a blue belt would do it, or even a purple yeah. belt would do it like when you see the browns and, and the blacks compete you know the first minute when they're feeling each other out they're really feeling each other out yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know like why what, what, what goes through your, your heads at that point of time when you're really just holding stuff like that, you know? I, I would say that it's probably because if they've been training that long, you know, it's like when you told me your story about competing, you're, you're nervous, you're tense, everything's yeah, like that. Yeah. Once you get to the, po- the, the point where you're competing at brown and black, most of those people have competed a lot. Yeah. So it's much easier for those experienced competitors to treat competitions like rolling sessions. Wow. 
because they're they, it's like dude when you if you've competed all the way to brown and black like you've lost in competition like a lot, you're not yeah, you're not yeah, going to be is. the person that's like Ugh, that freaks out when they lose right. or anything like it's just part of the deal right. so like you go in there you slap pants you fist bump you can be way more chill you can be way more relaxed because you've just been down that road right. so many times <laughs> that like you're not going to fucking go in there and be tense and freak, you can yeah, be kind of yeah. loose and you're not as worried about the consequences because it's like you've lost enough to know. Like, yeah. th- there's no one ever undefeated in jiu-jitsu. <laughs> People get undefeated in MMA and boxing. Wait, has you Gordon can... Ryan been defeated? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah he yeah. lost to Vinny Magalhaes in competition. He lost to uh, another guy. But, but I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in the gym, he's still getting tapped all oh, the time. Yeah, of course, of course. Right, but even in competition, he's, mm. he's still lost. Mm. And so it's just... It happens, and when those people lose, they don't freak out. They don't lose their shit. It doesn't ruin their careers. It's just part of the, <laughs> it it's is just part of the game. Yeah. So they can be relaxed in there. But when yeah. you get the the white belts, the blue belts, the purple yeah. belts, even they get in there and they're stressed the fuck out. They're tense. They don't want to lose. They think it's so embarrassing. They, like I, yeah. I get my white belts. And I still blue belts think still, that sometimes though. They think it's like the end of the world yeah. and everybody's gonna laugh at them. Yeah. And then like it's like, dude, no one cares. No, because <laughs> like, uh, no, so with, with no disrespect. Yeah. With no disrespect. We don't know but, that because we think that we gotta prove something yeah. to the professor. You know. Like, yeah. like, I got to prove to the professor that, oh, you spent all this time teaching me and, <laughs> you know, and I didn't, like, throw that all out the window. But I'm not knowing that the professor knows that it takes a long time for you to actually yeah. yes. <laughs> master these things. So they don't get mad when you fuck up, really. You get no. mad more than... They just move on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's so much more personal to you, right? With no disrespect yeah. to the relationship between you and your instructor. Yeah. But it's like... And also, I say this to my students sometimes when they get nervous about competing. Yeah. have to remember that 50% of all the people in competition lose the first round yeah, yeah. half yeah. of the people yeah. Yeah. lose instantly <laughs> right? Right? like that's just an objective fucking fact right maybe a draw of two you get a little 49 percent, whatever but half of every person there loses their first match dude it was so weird because like right uh, i think it was my first column or the come after that i made a mistake somehow i made a mistake or i missed something or i forgot um i still won but uh, the, the, the first match I won and then I went to my professor and I, I think I was upset with myself because I could have gotten something but I didn't or maybe I didn't see it or whatever I forgot what it was but I went I, I went to my professor and went oh I'm so sorry and he looked at me and he's like what the fuck are you talking about this is <laughs> this is what we're here for he's like what the fuck are you talking about you're here yeah. <laughs> you know it's okay that's the, that's the battle it's just getting there <laughs> yeah this is this is why I like dude I don't care who you are competing if you turn up and you go through that stress, that's that's a that's a hero's journey, yeah. man. That's Joseph Campbell's hero's journey, right? Yeah, yeah. You go through the training, you do the training camp, you lose the weight, you're stressed the fuck out, you yeah, feel like yeah. you're gonna shit yourself on the mat yeah, when you go yeah, up there. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to lose. Your instructor's watching you. Yeah. Everybody is yeah. fucking. You think when you get through that and you're done with it, yeah. the relief and just like right, yeah. even if you lose, yeah. the relief of being done yeah. is like you. Well, went I love through, that shit. Yeah, you went through the journey yeah. and you did something One extremely best difficult. It's right after you're done and then you're watching your teammate competing for like the finals. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because really your, your your journey's over and you're like, oh, he's stressed out even more. Like, like, ah, man, hey, good luck, bro. <laughs> hey, I'm here for you. <laughs> he's where I was like 20 minutes ago. So. Yeah, that was that's that's one of the more, more fun things. Yeah, but I reckon like in in the the weight category that I fight in, which is seventy six, that's that's a tough. One. That's always a lot that's of motherfuckers, tough, man. Yeah, that's yeah. a tough division. Yeah, that's tough because it's never just you. You know, it's always yeah. four other guys, man. Yeah. Minimum. Yeah. Minimum. And I was contemplating on going up to eighty. And then they were like, dude, the guys in 80 are a lot bigger, dude. Because they're fucking cutting down from wherever. <laughs> like, you know, everybody's got this weird. <laughs> yeah. It's a lose lose, dude. <laughs> I, know. I was like, I guess I'm here then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, man. So I'm curious, man. Like, uh, yeah. I, I always find it interesting that you, that, that people like you, you discovered or started yeah. training later on in your life yeah. as a means to get some kind of physical discipline yeah. and you're playing this sort of long game. And uh, I think. When I watch someone like you like do your stand up and everything, <clears throat> I'm curious how taking on a, a really arduous, physically demanding thing like jujitsu yeah. influences how you think and your comedy and all that kind of stuff. Because I think it's so easy for people just to kind of sit back and let momentum take them where they are. Yeah. But to take up something, that's why I respect everybody that walks in here. Like, yeah. if you're a dad, if you're a fucking accountant, yeah. if you're, I don't care what menial job you have, if you roll up into a jujitsu gym after working eight hours a day, taking care of your kids, taking care of your wife to get strangled in your free time. Like, those are people who Straight are up. looking for something. Straight up. So I'm yeah. wondering how that, like, uh, 
influences how you think about like or how you process things if 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 you found that it's influenced your stand up or like yeah. the way that you live your life i think the 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 what how it influenced me is and and i and i forgot a little bit of this during cb you know i forgot a little bit of this cuz i i didn't have time on the mat and 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 that makes me forget um because i'm such I'm 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 in such an advanced position in the Singapore comedy scene, right? I'm one of the main guys now. Yeah. Um when I'm on the mat, I'm not one of the main guys. You know, when I'm on the mat, I'm like a, a regular just just a white belt that's learning and I got to put all that um ego of like I'm an experienced person, you know, I've been in this for a very long time and I'm a, you know, I'm somebody that can impart something to you. I got to put all that ego aside and now be the kid that learns, you know? Like so that is really like a a a role shift, you know, in terms of like where I am in comedy scene and where I am in jiu-jitsu. So it it really keeps me in touch with who who with with how to put the ego aside and just be like you know now you kind of have to listen to people who who are more experienced than you because when it comes to stand up in singapore it's not that there's not more people experienced than me but in singapore like i'm 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 one of the guys that actually put people on and one of the guys that actually can impart the experiences that i've had and i've had generally because of the years that i put in a lot more experience like i've been doing this for 10 years like i've been doing stand up for 10 years you know so when a young kid comes and he's only been doing it for two there's a lot that i can give but i'm when when be so used to being that guy when you come down to the mat and you're the guy that has nothing to give <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly that's, that's like a different that's a new and refreshing feeling but at the same time it reminds that the ego that came with that yeah. now has to go right so during cb when i couldn't roll i was so i was i was i was stuck there and i couldn't come back so so it makes you forget but that's 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 really how it has um sort of influenced me in terms of like all right so so i get it oh okay so so if i could equate maybe in comedy i'm kind of like a purple huh okay <laughs> yeah 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 purple brown yeah yeah black yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah i'm kind of like a purple you know yeah, yeah so, so i'm teaching the whites over there so you you kind of make those parallels you know oh yeah absolutely yeah. And then also, um, the, the the amazing thing that I found out is like when you're in a position like if you're deep into side control, and 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 you know if if it's your first few times that you're deep into side control, I used to never be able to escape side control. Like I had no idea how to do that shit. Like once you put me in side control, I'm fucked. You know, I'm mean generally side control for 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 someone on my level. It's 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 a fucked up position to be in anyway. We don't really, you know, tough to get out, <laughs> tough to get out right? Like you're not supposed to get in there uh, in the first place. But I didn't know. But um, when I started to like. When when I really asked around and and they 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 show a little bit of the options of what to do like moving your hips and you know bridging out and shit like that, and and I saw how you can escape a position uh, when you're in such a compromised position for very long. It's not really the end of the world because there's always some way to escape if you actually took your time and if you actually you know did that. I feel like just the introduction to that idea was was good for me to like oh okay if I can keep pr- practicing this maybe I can reflect this in my life. I mean I'm not there at all, but just the very thought of like somebody showing me that is like oh okay this is this is great so that's why i love it so much it's like oh okay this i found it you know i was like all right i want to do this then you know cuz it it really makes you feel um like you know i get like 14 year olds and 20 year olds that have no experience in life you know but they can whoop my ass so like i don't know where the position in terms of who's the alpha in this room you know what I'm yeah saying? yeah well they have experience it's just in a, in a narrow area right yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean like if you get tapped out by like yellow belt serafina she's got more experience than you but it's in one narrow yeah, little yeah, path true, that that's you're true. trying to follow yeah, down, that's right? true, that's true, that's true. i gotta say though man it, it's I, I find your self-awareness very refreshing thank you man because it, it takes somebody who's extremely self-aware to know that like hey my ego can, if i just only do the things i'm good at all the time yeah. and i don't try to be take that beginner mindset to other avenues yeah. it's a trap it's a trap that you could get stuck in and then all of a sudden like maybe you say when you thought earlier oh do i want to be 40 and then not and just not have this other thing like you're investing in yourself yeah. later on that you're going to put your ego in check and yeah. go do this really difficult thing and that's what people who are highly successful you, do it takes a lot to quell that yeah you know what my friend told me when i went, when i posted a picture of uh i think I, i was trying to do a i was trying to pass god and i just uh, should have uh we're gone can you just check make sure everything's <laughs> it's okay it's okay bro yeah i think uh, uh I, i was um 
you know, I'll just show a picture of me rolling, and then I, I put a caption on there. I put a caption on there. I said like, um, that I don't know how I can enjoy some enjoy something so much and feel so clueless at the same time. You know? Yeah. I I, I can't I, I can't I can't imagine like oh how how am I enjoying this but I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. How are you enjoying getting like fucked up and strangled <laughs> yeah, and like I don't like, even know what to do. I but I don't know what to do. And a friend actually said, "Yo, that's that's peak learning. You know." That's yeah. like peak That's like learning when you're just doing something and you don't know what to do, but you're moving forward and you're you're you're, you're re- that that cluelessness, that beginner mindset, like you mentioned earlier, mm. that beginner mindset is is something very in, very uh, important for people to, especially in the later um, in in your thirties, like for me, mm. to be able to still put in your life. Because when you're in your thirties, I feel like it's. It's a whole new door, which, man, I, I, I'm, I'm now excited to know what my 40s will look like. <laughs> yeah. You know? Because you can see the potential of the work that you're putting in now and how yeah, it may yeah, bear fruits yeah, in 10 years, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, it, like, Even with your podcast, too, yeah, your training, yeah, your stand-up. Yeah. Like, you're like, wow, man, 10 years down, I might be fucking yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, you know I'm what I'm really saying? I'm really excited. I'm going like, <laughs> oh, dude, if at 30 plus and I've spent that much years and you get here, I wonder what 40, like, or, or I have these perspectives at 30 that I could never have imagined that I would have I mean I'm 33 now I would never 23 year old like dumbass right like totally yeah. different person bro so if if I think about that I'm like oh what will I be like at 43 like what how will my life change and how will my perspectives change like I was this sure of my 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 uh, ideas or my views uh, when I was 23 I was just this sure but it, you know turns out it changed <laughs> yeah but you but you lack so much sort of wisdom even then right like I think of myself at 23 and I was just a fucking ape dude like my intentions were still similar to what they are but you just don't understand like the concept of time and then putting in all like for you right to to tell your 20 something year old self like I'm gonna start this thing up like jujitsu or whatever that's gonna take me 10 to 15 years to get where I want to go where I'm gonna go in when I'm tired and get fucking choked so that way I can get good at this skill that nobody gives a fuck about but but it's because you want it yeah. right and at that point of time nobody gave a fuck about that at 23 yeah, exactly. nobody gave a fuck about jiu-jitsu right? yeah, yeah. and they're not thinking about like 10 years I'm it's it's it takes a a level of self-discipline to first of all get your in get yourself into the gym every day to get to that point but then to be like know that you're doing this for like your future self plus the level of health that you'll have just I mean on its own the fact that you're going to be in better shape you're going to be stronger you're going to be healthier like I mean that's a huge side piece alone and then the confidence that you get from you know knowing that you're kind of like uh, like strong and you're confident in your whatever your masculinity your physical strength all of that kind of shit right do you feel like the nogi um, aspect of jiu-jitsu is going to be more popular in years come compared to the gi or do you feel like like there's still chance for the gi to still maintain um, the same level of popularity as nogi. Like, I don't know which is more popular, but I see a lot more. Do you do uh, nogi or do you I just try? Do gi? You know, but I, I have no idea what to do in nogi because I you lose the sleeves I, and the I, collar. Lose, and you're like, I don't what the fuck know do I what the fuck to do, bro. <laughs> like, the, I mean, they start standing and I'm like, okay, my takedowns is shit. <laughs> so, so you're pulling guard, aren't you, you motherfucker? <laughs> you pussy, you're pulling guard. I know. <laughs> I gotta, I guess I gotta pull guard. Um, yeah, but. That's the that's 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 the thing. Like when when I see like John Danaher's team, like the Gordon Rice and Nicky Rods and stuff like that, they they're kind of like, I mean, they, those guys are like the Avengers now, right? I mean, I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah, those, well, they're, that, yeah. they're those, notoriously amazing at what they do. Right? <laughs> yeah, those guys are like the No Gi Avengers right now. So so, but like I don't know anybody of that equivalent in the Gi portion of Jiu Jitsu. I do think that it's uh. It, I think both will definitely be popular. I think they'll, right. they'll, they'll trend up. But to me, it's like uh, it depends on who your coach is uh, because the Brazilians put a much heavier emphasis on the gi, on gi training. Even the no-gi, uh, like high-level Brazilians do mostly gi work. And then like when they're training in the no-gi season, then they'll switch or whatever. Right. Whereas like the, the Americans, which is like the Danaher guys, right? Yeah. Even me, Major, like the, uh, the, the non-Brazilians that run academies and stuff put – at least a 50-50 emphasis on it. especially the MMA guys too because we understand that like the the grips not having that changes your 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 drilling it changes your position so if your gym has more of an MMA focus you're going to for sure see more no gi more wrestling because those grips change everything right very hard to hit single legs and double legs when people can grab your collar when they can grab your sleeve you know something like uh, the Brazilians also especially in the gi put a lot more emphasis on guard pulling 
Whereas like your your Western, your Americans are going to do a lot more wrestling takedowns, not as much guard pulling. So it just depends on who your coach is, what, where they emphasize their values. For me, I put all of my emphasis on MMA, okay. meaning that I still do the, all the gi classes and everything, but I don't teach gi techniques that wouldn't work in MMA. That's why I don't do barambolos. It doesn't mean that, like, if someone wants to learn a bear and bull, like, I don't, I don't ban any techniques, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. My white belts can heal look each yeah, other. So if they, but, I'm but I'm not the guy to go to if you want to be a bear and bull right, player. Right, we right. would need to hire another coach who's really into that shit, yeah. and I'm down for that. Yeah. I'm just not the guy because you bear and bull in a fight, you're getting fucked up. Yeah. I want my jiu-jitsu to be universal. Right, right, right. So, again, you're going to lack emphasis in certain areas because, like, Having said that, my students, if they go against a really good bear and in a competition, that's a deficiency my students are going to have, and they're out there, yeah. right? And I don't teach it. Yeah. So it doesn't mean that one is better or worse. It just simply means that my f- focus goes toward techniques that work in gi, no gi. So like even my grips, most of my grips in the gi are like overhooks, oh, really? stuff like that. Like, yeah, because that's I don't do a lot of spider guard. I don't do a lot of lasso guard. Of course, I trained with the Brazilians for years, so I still know that shit. Like, it's a, like Italo and Bruno, yeah, yeah, Popeye, yeah, yeah. they were my coaches also. Oh, really? Right? really? Yeah, oh. we, we were colleagues oh, for shit. years. Popeye lived with me. Oh, shit, for real? Yeah, those <laughs> yeah. are my coaches now, like Bruno yeah, and Popeye. Yeah, yeah. That's why I hit you up, bro. <laughs> and I was like, and some of the students there, like Nathaniel yeah, and yeah, Benjamin yeah. and uh, all those Darryl, guys, they would also, guys. Daryl, they would all train yeah. with me too. Serafina. Oh, yeah, yeah, Like, yeah, the, yeah. you know, they would all. So I was the brown belt then, mm. and then they were all the, the black belt coaches, and they were my coaches mm. as well. And then when Trifecta uh, went down and the Brazilians split, yeah. that's when I moved to KO. All right, right, right. So then I came back and then opened up Stronghold. Right. But so, I, like, I know that shit. I was still taught that shit. But it's just now that I'm a coach and I'm in control of the curriculum, mm. I put a different emphasis on it. So I don't want as much spider guard because you don't get that shit in MMA. You don't get that that's those grips. What's, in, what's it like when you fight MMA? Like, okay, when, when, when I guess when you're grappling, right, you kind of um, could not... You, you won't foresee your face getting hit or you won't foresee getting elbowed or stuff like that. But when you're doing MMA, now you got to be aware of everything. You know, like even if you're trying to do a takedown, you could get elbowed in the ear or something. So like, like what what kind of, like that must really, your your senses might be, must be really heightened at that point in time when you're really fighting MMA. I can only imagine that shit, man. Yeah. Well, gra- like jiu-jitsu, when it comes to an MMA fight, yeah. goes back to like white belt, blue belt level jiu-jitsu. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Because what works in MMA for jiu-jitsu is like close guard, half guard, yeah. Yeah. That, that basic shit, like underhooks, okay. stand-ups, okay. hip escapes. Like, yeah. dude, there's not, no one, there's not many, unless you get like a really high experience level, like, you, you know, you'll see the occasional MNRE and stuff like that, yeah. but they're from like world-class guys, okay. right? Like all of the, the 50-50 stuff, the MNREs, the Barambolos, the deep half guards, the, yeah. all of these sort of esoteric, sport jujitsu specific shit disappears when you're getting punched in the face. It It doesn't mean some people can't make it work if they're extremely knowledgeable in that area. Like Ryan Hall, he'll hook BJ Penn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right? But he's a master in those positions. Ryan Hall's that wizard. Yes, and BJ Penn's a IBJJF world champion at Black Belt. Yeah. Right? So it doesn't mean that it doesn't work, but the level of experience has to be so great, Mm. right, that you can sort of overcome that stuff. But for the general thing, most of that stuff's going to be gone. Yeah. Like, you can't, you know, people like the deep half and shit, yeah. 50-50. Like, you can get punched from a lot yeah. of those positions. You slip out without the grips. Yeah. Like, I see people going for takedowns and then, bam, like, the elbows hit the fucking side of the face. Oh, my God. Why don't I teach guard pulling? <laughs> because good luck being on the bottom with somebody in the in your half guard or close guard where you can get elbowed in the yeah, face. Yeah, I mean, if, if, you're, if somebody's in your close guard, you can still get fucking punched in the face. You know, that's, that's still... Wow, yeah, yeah. So that doesn't apply. So sometimes when I think about it, like... like when but if you're a master at the close yeah. guard, yeah. a master, like really fucking high level, going against somebody who's like maybe even a purple or a brown or even like a, a kind of low-level black belt, yeah. you might still be able to... Ca- like, Cron Gracie in the close guard can probably fuck up a lot of people in the UFC oh. still because he's so high level there. But for the general right, person, right, 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 you would not want to play that game. <laughs> <laughs> right? But if you're an extreme master yeah. in like those esoteric positions, then you can make them work. Oh, dude, that was a funny skit I watched online about uh, this guy that was trying to pick fights, you know, and then when people started wanting to like fight him, he goes into Burimbolo. <laughs> <laughs> and the motherfuckers just they just look at him all confused and shit <laughs> you see the the Simpsons gif where they did the where Marge did the cage fight 
And he was like, uh, the guy was like, oh, I know jujitsu. And then he lays on his back and he's like, crawl in between my legs and meet your doom. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that, right? I always think about that. Uh, that's like, funny. Or like, get on top of me and meet your doom. That's or some shit like that. funny. That's funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Simpson's still running, huh? Still running, yeah. bro. I think it's the longest running television Maybe in history now. Yeah. Now that now that cops just got canceled. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Those on for like thirty five well, years or something. That? Like like where, 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 which state are you originally from in the U.S.? I'm from West Virginia. West Virginia. So is there is there are, are there demonstrations that's, there? That's Trump country, bro. All oh, right. So no. That's, that's, no. that's Trump. I mean, you no know, demonstration there. You know, I mean, there's like three black people in the whole fucking state. Right, so. right, right, right. right, right. <laughs> there, there might be some. There might be some smaller uh, things, but yeah. you know, West Virginia is really rural. Yeah. Like the, these things tend to happen. These issues are mostly focused in cities. Yeah. yeah Portland, yeah. New York, LA. People forget LA. how big the U.S. is actually. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. most of it is those small town. Yeah, 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 yeah. Places and, those, and shit. Yeah, I mean there was. Oh man, I I, I love actually um, looking at these small towns in the U.S. Sometimes on TV when they when they show them going to these small towns is because. Did you travel through when you were like doing your tours and stuff? Or are you no, hitting mainly I only the hit, cities? I, I've only been to uh, L.A. and New York. So I haven't been to like you know Virginia or I don't know all the areas. That Bible Belt I know, country, I know. man. It's, it's so. It's a uniquely American kind of no, but thing. But it's most of it. I, I look at it and I'm like, okay, that's the reason why not a lot of them travel because they can't even finish traveling their own country. You know, it's so big, man. It's so huge, and especially when you come from a place like Singapore where everything's within reach for half an hour, and you think of a concept of like. M- Terengganu or fucking you know Pulau Pinang still being your country yeah. you know that's like a, people in Pulau Pinang they're way different than the people here driving here, driving here to Thailand is just like going to a one state over or yeah. some shit yeah. like in so the US so I would imagine in the US all the people in the state, they all have their different cultures and that's like you know they all have their own I mean yeah they're probably from the states but, but I mean they're all uniquely American but at the same time it's a different language a different you know a different style of speaking you know that must be very intriguing like I would equate I would usually draw a parallel to like when somebody's like for example from the south and they speak with that with that draw and they speak yeah 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 and and I hear why where they speak and I would think like oh this is like if I were to meet someone from Klantan I guess I guess that would be the difference you know like we're still speaking Malay but I don't know what the fuck he's saying <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly exactly <laughs> Or it's like, but you know, most of the issues, I mean, you can even be familiar with it. Like, you know, if you go to Malaysia and you're in KL or you go to most of Malaysia, yeah. which is not the big yeah, cities, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're dealing with an entirely different set oh, of problems, no. an entirely different fucking yeah, demographic. Different group of like, people, bro. Different, absolutely, yeah, yeah. but there's in the same country. Yeah, yeah, different world, bro. It's a different world. So when you travel, you get to see that. You get to draw parallels to your country, which is very interesting. So that's why, like, when people paint the idea of like the US or any country to be as such the only things they see on TV and and they don't they don't have the privilege to travel you know or they don't have the opportunity to travel it's 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 almost like it's an unfair judgment on the country because like you have to understand if if people looked at like for example from people when people look at Malaysia and you know, they only judge Malaysia by the ill informed and the ones that are loud and the ones that are I guess bigoted or what they they, they only judge it based on those people because those people are the ones that they show on TV then you're not giving it a fair chance you know you're not giving the country a fair chance because like what the what the quote unquote rednecks look like there is like the, the, that's our version of the rednecks you know like everybody every every country you know and every culture has their version of the bigoted and they have their version of the ill informed you know they all have their rednecks they all have it's their, it's their own version you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. Their own version. so when you get to draw that parallel you're like oh all right i get it <laughs> okay, okay, okay yeah, yeah. And, and i yeah. think most of the issues like i mean I, I I fall right in the middle. I have some liberal views. I have some like conservative oh, yeah. views yeah, yeah. and all you, that kind of shit. You become that as you grow older. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then the other issue too is like everybody exists, at least in the U.S., in an echo chamber, right? Like those people in the cities aren't going to the small towns to talk to those people and be like, why Why do you like Trump? Why do you ha- hold these conservative views, right? And the reverse is true too. Those fucking rednecks aren't yeah. going to like Harlem in the U.S. to talk about or fucking Baltimore to talk to the black people who've been abused by cops. Like no one's doing that shit. They're kind of staying in their own little bubble and then they're passing judgment on the other side without actually talking to the other side. And then, you know, it's all inflamed. Like you said, the loudest person, it all inflamed by the media, which is, I think, the real problem. If there's one thing that Trump's right about, it's fake news, and it goes on both sides. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, you can have 99 fucking protests. The one that gets out of hand is the only one that's going to be 24-7 on CNN or Fox News. And so, like, it totally shows that things aren't being accurately depicted. It's more like 
this is what's interesting. This is what people are going to consume. This is what's going to flare them up and make them mad and make them watch more and rage and fucking tweet and shit yeah, like that. Yeah, and you realize that like on both ends, it's it's kind of the same. You know, like in it, when when you're a far right, like I'm I'm just saying in in um in my culture, uh, this part of the world, if you're a far right like conservative religious person. Like super religious person, there's certain things that you can't do within the restrictions of what 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 you're supposed to adhere to, and if you actually moved over to the far left, it's the same fucking thing. You can't say some words, <laughs> you can't assume some things. You can't. It's yeah. the same fucking thing. It's just two different ideas, but it's the same practice. So if you meet in the middle, it's kind of. I mean, life is the middle, right? Like it's yin and yang, right? And most people exist within that realm, right? <laughs> yeah. Center left, center right, centrist, like. But the extremes are the ones that make all the fucking they noise are, and get all the TV and shit, shit on them. <laughs> Hey, can I ask you a question, man? Because uh, I would love to get into like your special a little bit, or yeah, yeah, yeah. or because it's it's along these lines. Yeah. You know, you do a lot of kind of racial humor, yeah. and, and I always like to get the Singaporeans. I'm not gonna sit here and fucking talk about what race shit here because I don't know anything about it, and my country has its own yeah. fucking problems to yeah. deal with and all that kind of yeah. stuff. But I'm curious because like you do some racial humor, and I, I think it's great. I think you hit a really good balance. I think it's controversial for Singapore standards, but still within the realm of. Do you feel like, for example, if Singapore started to shift one way or the other, like that what you say would be taboo? Do you feel like Singapore? I mean, I'll give you an example. On this podcast, I mean, I really don't edit anything. Yeah. Like, we just say what we say. I put it out. I mean, I'm not fucking famous enough to maybe rub the wrong people yeah. a certain way, but I just kind of release it unfiltered. And I feel like there's a part of Singapore that craves that. Of course. So when you say shit and you're, yeah. you're yeah. special about, like, pot, do pot yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, alcohol yeah, yeah, yeah. and different races and kind of making fun of it, that's quite controversial for Singapore, but you're still pushing the boundaries in kind of a safe zone. So I'm wondering, like, do you think it's going to go more into a direction of free speech? Because you're, you're, if you test the boundaries a little bit, you can push a little bit further, a little bit further. Or do you feel like you're going to get like a counter push um, based on the current climate? I think a counter push is inevitable. You know, a counter push is inevitable. It will happen. But um, when I'm also not naive enough to, 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 to think that we will get complete freedom of speech in Singapore. What I am really trying to do is trying my best to mirror... Um, what the current climate of like the 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 average Singaporean perspective is okay, at least the ones that are within my circle. Um, I believe that um, a lot of the the the, the shows or the, the 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 media that we consume over the years in Singapore is very filtered and is very clean cut and is very uh, PG and family friendly, which is great, I guess you know uh, to a certain extent if you don't want to pollute. If, if, if you're in fear of polluting, you know, um, the, the clean image that we have. But at the same time, I think in order for us to move forward, we need to understand that there is this other side of Singapore that we need to address. We can't just sweep everything under the rug. And it's a very Singaporean thing to do, too. Yeah. If you have an issue, you just sweep it under the rug. Oh, we don't talk about this. Or oh, we don't address this. Or oh, is this something that we are troubling? Or oh, ban it. Or, oh, you know, should, we should ban it. You know, we should clamp it down. We should ban it. We should clamp it down. Instead of trying to understand it to... to I don't know if the objective of the people in charge are to further you know, educate the people in terms of like uh, social issues or something. I don't know if that's that I don't know if that's their priority in Singapore because it's all about being productive. It's all about the economy, you know, it's all about where do we stand, you know, in terms of like in the eyes of the world. You know, it's about being being efficient, you know, but but not a lot of these issues that have to do with like social awareness, you know, or maybe 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 even racism. All these all these topics that people don't want to touch generally get swept under the rug with with a lot of the mass mainstream media so i i come in there to give people a little bit of an alternative to give a real voice and i've always i've never liked being on <laughs> that kind of like hey guys like i was just at a shoot um i think a couple of days ago and they were like okay fine so the scene is you know somebody's telling your joke and you're mad that they took your joke so you gotta be mad and i acted mad and they were like, oh, no, we want you to get madder. And I was like, that's as mad as I would get. <laughs> yeah. Like unrealistically <laughs> mad? Yeah, I said, yeah. I wouldn't get madder than that <laughs> if somebody took my joke. And, and they were like, yeah, but it's for TV. So they said, it's for TV. You need to amp it up. So that's where the perspective of like, oh, okay, everything on TV isn't as 
real as it looks. It's amplified, right? So I don't. I I I want the option of the reality aspect of things to 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 be available for people to consume. Other than the other than um, this this whole uh, fabricated image of you know of of what Singapore is uh, being fed today, I think it's good that we have that reality option, and and I, I and I hope it will still continue. Uh, new podcasts like these, yeah, I was just yeah, say, yeah, yeah, and all that is new media yeah. is, is I think going to lead the charge here because you can sit here and talk for an hour and a half unfiltered. We we can swear, we can get drunk, we can try to have. On- honest conversations to the best of our ability and i think dude i think you fit in a really um interesting niche and you you could play a really interesting part in singapore over the next however many years because you in the same time that you can do uh you can make dick jokes and racist (laughs) jokes and drug jokes and all that kind of stuff can work for fucking new channel news was it channel four in singapore Uh, 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 yeah channel five you and I've seen some of your things that you do yeah. on there. Like my wife's parents will watch your show and you're trying to have interesting things. So you can make dick jokes and racist jokes and they're jokes, but then you can also go down this other line and people can see where you can sit here and do a podcast and talk about fighting, but then we can discuss some and all of that is the okay. The options should we can, be there. You know what I'm saying? The options should be there, but like I wouldn't go as far as to like criticize um, the mass media for what they choose to put out. Sure. I'm just saying, if you want to put out, fine. If anybody's going to consume that, great. But we can't clamp down on the other thing. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> you know? Cause bo- and both things can exist simultaneously. They can. Yeah, right? they can. It's, it's a weird perspective that, that, that uh, I think uh, Singaporeans have sometimes. It's like, oh, this other thing doesn't uh, go in line with this thing, so we got to ban this thing. Yeah. You know? Instead of like, why can't these things just exist together? <laughs> I know. It's that tribal shit, dude. Everybody's like that. Like, if you're in the U.S., I don't understand why you can't be like, hey, clearly these, these videos that everybody's seeing are fucked up and we should reform police. Yeah. Also, <laughs> looting is bad. <laughs> Rioting is bad. Like, every, pick every issue. Immigration. immigration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we can't let the fucking borders just overrun. Yeah. It's got to be draw the line somewhere, yeah. right? Fucking abortion. Okay, well, yeah. if you think about it, it's kind of fucked up. But also, like, maybe women should have the right yeah. to choose. Like, you should be able to have conflicted views yeah. without fucking digging your heels in so much that you're just going to not listen to the other you person. You should be able to coexist. And they're yeah. your countrymen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, it's like, uh, did you see the video of the statue getting pulled down and then that guy got shot or that, that late? I, I've I've seen a, a lot of videos of statues being pulled down. There's a lot of statues that are being pulled down right now. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I don't know about but the one that got shot. Someone pulled one down and then, you know, the counter protesters pulled out a gun and then shot somebody. And now the whole thing is ridiculous to me, right? It's like, okay, first of all, if you think that those statues shouldn't be pulled down, I hear you. If you think they should be pulled down, I hear you. But there's 150 people there. That shit's coming down. Like in that moment, you're not stopping it because there's enough people there that like, and you would decide to shoot your fellow American, your countrymen, <laughs> over, a statue? over a statue? Yeah. I mean, like you would rather harm. That's your, those are your people. Yeah. Even if they're on the opposite side of the yeah. spectrum, they're your people. You don't people. see it that way, though. I know. Because yeah, 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 yeah. it's like their ideology comes more yeah. important than their fellow yeah. human. There, there's mind. no such thing as like, oh, we're all humans. It's like, oh, no, you're not as human as I am because, you know, yeah. my... Because you're wrong. You're wrong. Yeah, exactly. My team is right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Blue's better than yeah, fucking yeah, yeah, yellow, yeah, yeah, yeah. or blue, you know, blue's better than oh, red. Dude, it's just yeah. Sometimes, man, when you get on Twitter, man, I, I was just having a conversation with my girlfriend about this yesterday. She's like, she, I think, I think I got a little bit too far with the Twitter stuff, you know, when and I get a bit too stressed with all these. There's so many of these social issues, and I'm over here trying to debate everybody about it. And then she says, we know, she's like, I think you're zooming in on this really, really hard. <laughs> like you, <laughs> you need to zoom out, you know, and 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 try to live in the moment man and i was like oh right okay uh it's tough not to (laughs) want to say something though when you see this crazy shit going on it's like it's just a it's a global for most people it's just a global outcry for common sense and being able to speak with somebody like you can have conflicting ideologies with another person and not want to shoot them in the yeah, face. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like, that's totally possible. Why wouldn't that be right? Yeah, yeah. You should be able to. <laughs> I mean, we've built global civilization up to this point, and then in this weird way, we're like regressing. We're going backward. It's oh, like, dude, uh, I, I mean, it will reach a boiling point at some point. You know, it will reach a boiling point where we'll have to. I don't know, man. I don't know. Maybe, maybe this is maybe, maybe this is the tail end of evolution. <laughs> maybe we just kill each other. <laughs> so exactly. know, right? This is yeah. Maybe, this is dude. Twenty twenty at the rate it's going. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, all that's left is just the guys that, that the guys that do <laughs> push yeah, the yeah. mute button, dude. Yeah, it's just yeah, everybody just gets wiped out, and it's like, and I'll and I'll be fucking pissed because I've only been a white belt my whole life. I'll be fucking pissed. <laughs> it's like, bro, at least let me die with my I blue mean, yeah, belt. Yeah, you know, at least man. let me die a blue man. Fucking, hell, I'll die a white belt, two stripe. That shit is bogus. <laughs> <laughs> I know, dude. There's there's so many jujitsu people out there. So many like four stripe white belts uh, that are just. It's like, oh, my progression. <laughs> Three months of no training. Uh, when I come back, my coach is going to think I suck. He's probably going to take a stripe off, you know? <laughs> just itching to get their, their belts, and then this yeah, whole thing yeah, comes yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. And then now we can't even train until probably phase three. I don't know when that's going to be, be, man. I hope in September or something. I hope I think it's going to be ADCC in uh, December. They're planning that shit? They were planning it. It's hard to see how it's going to go now. But, yeah, they were going to do the trials here. I was talking to Maher about it when he was on the podcast. Yeah. And, but, you know, with all this stuff, you never know. Never know right. where it's going to go from so here. So it's ADCC, only no gi, yeah. right? Yeah, it's only and no gi. And submission only, or is that point system? No, they do this weird kind of modified point system. Right. So it's like, uh, you know, you can, half the round is going to be no points. Okay. So it's kind of then submission only, you can pull guard okay. and shit. And then the other half of the round, they start points. And then when they start points, you're not allowed to pull right. guard. You get negative points. It's those kind of weird rules. <laughs> but they've also got some you good can rules. Can you knee like, bar ADCC? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, you can knee bar, you can heal. Oh hook, really? All that. Oh, the dark arts, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and heard you can put your palm arts. over somebody's face too. <laughs> well, in the actual ADCC, you know, you can slam. Like if you put me in a triangle, I can pick you up. That's bull- really. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's the real shit right there, dog. You know what I'm saying? Wow. wow. Yeah. But they have some good rules too. They have like uh, reversals, score you points. Yeah. It's like there's some bullshit rules I think in IBJJ. For example, let's say you have me in side control. If I bridge you all the way over yeah. and I get on top side control, yeah. I get no points for that. Hey, this is IBJJ. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, I know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you didn't pass the guard and it's not a sweep unless you use yeah. your legs. Yeah. But it's like, bro, I just went from bottom side control to top side control. Yeah. Yeah. That's a huge swing. Yeah. Nothing? But I told me that. Nothing yeah. for that? I was like, because when I reversed, I was like, oh, shit, do I get three points here? I was like, nah, man, because you didn't go yeah. from a, <laughs> a guard. No from a guard. <laughs> bullshit, though. It doesn't make any sense yeah. at all. Yeah. That's a huge switch. It's literal <laughs> one, like, 180. Like you, you, this is difficult to get. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So they don't, they award points for things like that, for reversals. Yeah. You know, so they have some good rules, I think, too. Yeah. If you go from your back to side control, you get points, right? Like, like if, you, if you went like back, if you took the back and then you get four points and then you, from the back and then you just sort of reverse it to side control, you get points for that? No, you don't? You don't get points. <laughs> no, because it's, it's you, you can only oh. move up yeah, the ladder, right? <laughs> you can't move down. They're like, what? What? Not, and then if you try to go back to the back, you also don't get poisoned. What? Because you are already tip of the so spear. So can you do like a, 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 a mount, side control, mount, side control, mount, side control? You no, can't dude. do that shit. <laughs> no, they don't, they don't let you do that. Like, get the fuck out of here. Because it's like you take the back. What's next? Yeah. The, the yeah. submission. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. the tip. Yeah. You can't get to the tip. We restart you. <laughs> so if they put you back in the guard, then you have to pass again. You know, this is like, this is how you can kind of game the rules a little bit. Like yeah. the, the, not the meows, the... Mendez brothers were kind of notorious for like pass the guard, get the side control, then they'll let their foot hang out just a little bit. So you can just barely get a hold of it and then they'll they'll pull it out to get the points. <laughs> because they're like they're not gonna let you get back to a dominant guard, but they're gonna let you get a taste. A little tiny tip, something that they can still quite easily free, and then they'll play. Or like uh Tanquino, you know, I don't, Tanquino I don't know Mendez right? brothers, but I don't know Tanquino. Yeah. So he's another a guy who actually fights in the UFC now. But he was well known for like there's a thirty second rule, roughly speaking, where you have to be active. Right, it have to look like you're progressing, or else you'll get stalling points. Yeah. So he would always like notoriously have a clock in his head, yeah. where he would just know when he can move, because he'll get you in the side control, and wow. and like once he gets you there, you're fucked. So he'll wait. Thirty seconds come, he's got this mental clock. He'll like put the knee on the belly a little bit. You push it down. Okay, boom. Thirty seconds, he starts. <laughs> right, and it's, he's that good at like gaming the gaming the system, right? <laughs> hey man, you gotta win some way. <laughs> hey, and this is like the tip of the spear when it comes to competition, right? Every, you gotta manipulate those fucking yeah, rules, yeah. man. You got to manipulate the rules to play the I game. I mean, damn. I was actually, yeah, I mean, at my level, like, I'm, I'm barely doing anything. So, you know. That, what's, your, what's, what's your game? Like, what do you, uh, I mean, what do you like to do? What do you like to play? What's your favorite submission? Uh, I arm bar. Yeah, arm bar or triangle. Yeah, yeah. That's the way I feel the safest. I'm, I work a lot from close guard, which I'm trying to change. Yeah, so when, when that's why I realized last competition, working from close guard, the options are very limited for me. Yeah, but if, um, but... My game plan, the last competition, was to get the guy in close guard and try to score the armbar from there. You know, just climb up and score the armbar, or even get a get get a triangle from there. So, so I mean, uh, I 
also enjoy doing uh, s- uh, scissor sweeps. <laughs> you know, that's a classic. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, Coast Guard never goes out of style. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Coast Guard yeah. never goes out of style. Yeah. That shit's always yeah, legit. I really enjoy doing scissor sweeps, you know, when I get it. Like, it feels good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, I, I don't really, I'm not really proficient in getting submissions off the mount than I am in Coast Guard. Yeah, so if I'm in, if somebody's in my Coast Guard, um, it's easier for me to work from there than if I get a mount and I want to try like I don't know for some reason people yeah. always escape my mounts <laughs> well it's just you know it's just drilling it's like where have you put more time well if you're drilling more from the close yeah. guard especially like you know you've been training for what a year or something yeah, like that less a year so I mean if you've been training for a year like a certain percentage of your time is spent in some positions yeah. rather than others and you've yeah. probably just spent way more time drilling arm bars from the yeah. close guard than you have like retaining the mount yeah. for example and, and when, when I watch when I, when, when I look at myself when I look at myself Myself uh, competing, and 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 a, f- a friend of mine, uh, he he was watching, and he was like, "Hey man, you gotta you gotta start opening guard, bro, because like if you just playing from here, like you know, you're not gonna improve." And I was okay, but I'm so afraid of getting my guard passed, you know. Yeah, that's the it's always the so, eternal trade off, so right? It's like yeah, but if I do that, I'm fucked. I don't, have, I don't have plan B, bro. I'm so afraid of getting my guard passed, you know. I'm like, if I open up, can I get it? I don't know, right? Yeah, but you gotta. I guess that's what I gotta drill now, you know. And I'm trying to get that. Yeah, but you sometimes you you're among the white belts. You always kind of want to win, still, you know, in the gym. But I'm trying to get rid of all that in my head. It's an important step. That's a really important step is to learn that it's okay to, to, to not only to tap up, but to give up positions. Like, listen, dude, if I, if I want to keep you in my close guard, if I can't escape a side control, what are we doing? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Amount, if I, but guess what? I have to be, be there in order to escape. So like, as you start to train more and more and more, you start to realize that like, same thing. Like if I'm rolling with my white belts, my blue belts, my purple belts, if like, I got to let them put me in stuff sometimes yeah. right they're never going to arm bar me just <laughs> yeah, on their of course own not, yeah. so i gotta stick it out yeah. there and it's like that too if a white belt is on my arm from the mount yeah. or a blue belt or whatever yeah. and i can't escape that yeah. i need to work my fucking arm yeah. bar defense yeah. Yeah. so it's like yeah. even this is what i always try to get my younger students to understand even if you're losing you're winning oh. because, because yeah. you have to yeah. get out of the bad spots yeah, yeah. so like, I, so, like I, I have this hierarchy that i always tell my students number one thing you have to master is escaping because there's a, there's a circle that you can't avoid if you want to get good at jiu-jitsu. Number one is you have to escape. Only if you can escape bad positions can you start to get to a neutral position where you can attack. And only if you don't get pinned down and controlled can you start to get, apply your offense. Yeah. Then when you can apply your offense, only can you start to work for submissions after that point. Right. It always works. There's no other way. You have to be able to escape. When you can escape, only when you're not being controlled can you start to attack. And then when you attack, you have to start to get your actual finishing skills down. But the circle, there's no other way. If, if you're in bottom mount, if you're always mounted, you're not submitting anybody. So side control, same. So get those down, and then you're going to start to be like, oh, I'm not being controlled as much. If I'm not being controlled, that means I can start to attack. Once I can start to attack a little bit, now we're going to work on your finishing skills. And then you're going to be able to get those taps that you're looking yeah. for. But even if you're losing, if you're, losing you're winning, bro. Yeah. If you're, someone's on your back, yeah. well, guess what? You're back escaping. Yeah. Or you're practicing how to tap. Yeah. One now, other, now like, I'm just, it's now all I'm good. I'm doing guard retention stuff, man. I'm like, because I'm trying to work on my open guards. I'm just doing a lot of guard retention stuff. And they're like, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I do spider guard, you know, also because I'm trying to play with that open guard. But uh, recently with, uh, you know, with COVID, you know, you're stuck with the people at home and they, they don't drill, right? So, so, so I'll play a little game with them and be like, hey, man, can I just put my feet up and you try to get... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just give me just something. Give me something. I just need I a little jujitsu, bro. I was like, all right, the game is you got to touch my shoulder. All right, if you can touch my shoulder, you win. <laughs> just got to yeah. find ways to get your jujitsu yeah, where know, you can man. get and it, it's dude. It's just getting that hip movement, you know, still getting there. Yeah, and um, watching the, I mean, I, I, I know that John Danaher's videos are probably the best to watch, but I just go to sleep every time I hear his voice. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Each, each He does eight fucking videos. Each one of them is like an hour and a half long. Like, I'm just like, I went through his whole leg lock DVD. And I seriously felt like I was like back in university really? or something. Yeah. Just like so uninteresting and dry. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he takes it to the fucking nuclear yeah. level. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's like you want to know how to escape an armbar. He's gonna get down to the yeah. fucking nuclear yeah. level of detail, yeah. Yeah. which is you want, but it's really it's tough. Really to just boring. Sit there. Man. Yeah. yeah. I I know friends that that could sit through his entire three hour DVD, his gut retention DVD. Like they send him sending me the DVD, going like, hey man, you wanna you you wanna retain God like. Here, watch this, and I'm here. You have to move in a serpentine like my yeah, exactly. God. Wow. It's like here, you want to watch this, and you're like, no, I'd rather watch some <laughs> fucking paint dry. 
know what I'm saying? <laughs> Jesus Christ. You know who's good? Who's like a good balance yeah. is, uh, especially if you want to get into some leg locks yeah. or something, the Lachlan Giles. Okay. His, uh, did you see like his Lachlan ADCC Giles? run? I, where I, he was, I, I don't know who that is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he was, uh, he's like our size. Okay. Right, like 76 okay. kilos or something. Okay. And then through the last ADCC, yeah. went and just fucking murdered everybody. He lost to Gordon Ryan only uh, in the absolute. So sure. he's going against all the big people. Beat the 99 kilo gold medal Damn. winner. Like, and all with heel hooks. Damn. Little guy, our size. And uh, he's an Australian guy, super personable. He's actually got a PhD in kinesiology, I yeah. think, as well. How's that Kit so Dale, dude? Is he okay? Kit Dale? I haven't heard from him in a while. He's another Aussie, right? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, Lachlan is Craig Jones's teacher. Oh, okay. Lachlan gave Craig his black Okay, belt. oh, okay, okay. So, but his, his DVD is really relatable. He's kind of like, talks like a guy. <laughs> but it's also still very, very technical and he knows his shit. You know what I mean? So if you're into that one, that one I would recommend. Yeah, yeah. And it doesn't cost like yeah, 500 Gordon, US dollars. Gordon Ryan's DVD is fucking 300 bucks, bro. I fucking know, dude. crazy, bro. I know. Danaher came out with his DVDs yeah. and then made the market like way up oh, here. Yeah. Now everybody's releasing their shit for like 100, 200 dollars. Yeah. 200, like 300 bucks. I'm like, mm, how much do I want to learn this? <laughs> yeah, exactly. To sit through like a university yeah. lecture by yourself. And then like you would need to watch all that and then you would need to have somebody yeah. there to yeah, drill it. Yeah, you have to drill it or else it's, yeah. it is no use. Yeah. I went through that DVD when Charmaine and I, my wife, yeah. opened up Stronghold. Okay. So we're sitting here every day for renovations okay, and then the like, DVDs. I'm yeah. here. Yeah. Come here. And then you're like, yeah. I'm here. I'm like, okay, let me drill this shit yeah, on you, yeah. you know. And because we took like three weeks to open, that was the only way I was able to like hey, get through. I that hope shit. you get to keep this place for as long as you can. Like get get past this into phase three, man, bro. Cause like yeah, man. yeah, this 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 place looks great to roll at. Yeah, bro, you gotta come roll this ah, sometime. Sure, I will, man. Next, yeah, next time we'll we'll do another podcast together at some point down the line no or whatever. Problem, bro. Come in when we can actually roll. You know, we'll roll with each other. We'll film it. We'll fucking have a yeah, good time. Yeah, I'm not I'm not the guy that just like goes ape shit. I promise. Uh, you that. I I believe you. I, I, <laughs> I believe do good you. informative I like you. full rolls. I think rolls, I'm like, the guy that goes ape shit. Skill building. <laughs> I think I'm the guy. I think you have to maintain. <laughs> you have to contain me. I'm like, hey, relax. <laughs> nah, dude. I'm so used to it. It's all good, bro. I always invite every motherfucker that's on this podcast to come train, and they never want to do it because I. Some of them, some of them train, some of them don't, and I feel like a lot of them are kind of like scared and shit. I'm just like, dude, it's like, nah. Again, I deal with parents and fucking professionals and everything. Like, I'm just yeah. trying to have good, good, I clean fun in here. You know, this blue belt from your gym. What's his name? Is a fr- I forgot his name. Uh, Anan. Yes, yes, yes. So Anan came to my gym, and and <laughs> this guy's so fucking hilarious, dude. He came in. Yeah, he's I, I love hilarious, him, and he's like, hey man, I'm, he came for a open. I think he was with Andres. I think he came for a, just like an open. Uh, open man and it was like hey man i'm here to assert my dominance on white belts and I'm like, Fuck <laughs> that's what he Fuck said it. yeah and on i taught you better bro what are you doing <laughs> he, he said it to me so it's fine oh. <laughs> yeah he's uh i gave him his blue belt he's been training with me for years yeah. man like uh i think he's probably been my student for like four or five years yeah. now yeah. so even all those guys andres yeah, yeah andres yeah, is yeah. an old old student of mine yeah. i still talk to andres he still texts me and yeah, shit yeah, like that yeah, so yeah. It's cool. We got some. We got some uh, community friends. What we should do is one time we schedule an open yeah. night. See if you can come down here. We'll get. We'll get. Uh, yeah. That's, that's Andres that's and see if we can get Benji that's to come. Oh, yeah. And Nathaniel oh, yeah. and all those, those guys. Those, those, rec- those fucking wreckers. They're the guys. That, They're the guys yeah, that are gonna. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna have to <laughs> tell them to settle down Not, a little bit. Um, <laughs> actually, they, <laughs> they, they roll they, hard. They roll like they a Brazilian. They really helped me out with my competition, though. I gotta give props to Benji and Nathaniel, man. Like when when when. Uh, Put the work yeah, in, man. They train yeah. hard. When they found out that I wanted to compete in Popeye Tony. Nathaniel was like, hey man, uh, help us out. He really put his time, bro. Like, he really, like, you know, like after rolls, he's like, yo man, let's do circuits. But those those kids go really, really hard. Sometimes they, they forget hard. that they I'm not hard, as yeah. developing as them. Like, I'm already <laughs> at a full adult stage where things start deteriorating <laughs> at this point. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you, you know, yeah. things heal fast because you're growing, you know? Uh, things don't heal fast for me because it's going this way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, and they're balls deep in competing, so they want to yeah, fucking like, good after it, bro. 100%. Come on, go 100%. I'm like, I am giving 100%. It's just what it looks like. <laughs> it's like, can you not tell? This what 100% looks like on my end. Do you understand? <laughs> That's fucking hilarious, dude. Uh, yeah, I got to roll with those guys. I haven't trained with them in ages. Yeah, dude. Uh, that's, yeah. But, uh, dude, the jiu-jitsu community and the scene yeah. in Singapore is the shit. It is. It's so it good. Is. It's so... That's why I wanted to start this podcast, yeah, man, yeah, because, yeah. like... Look, you, it, do you guys, do you guys uh, get a lot of feedback from the jiu-jitsu community listening to this? Uh, yeah, because, I mean, it's so yeah. small. I mean, 
one of the best things about this is like people in Singapore are generally pretty cool to hang out. Yeah. Like I've had Major on, he's the coach at Highlight Real, he's a good friend. I've had people from Impact, I've had people from Juggernaut on the yeah. podcast. Yeah. I've had people, I have a couple more people coming on. Um, Bruno Amarim, he's going to come on. He's, yeah. the, he's the head coach at uh, BJJ uh, uh, Gracie Baja. Okay, okay. So like, you know, people are cool yeah. just coming in and, and yeah. chatting. Like, uh, and fighters and shit. Tiffany Teal's oh, coming oh, on. Oh, yeah, you of know course her. I know Tiffany. Rahul, Faisal okay. One, okay. he's, he's going to come okay. on and do this. So these are people from all kinds of different gyms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, everybody's Man, just down Tiffany, to sit here Tiffany and talk shop. Tiffany was in Juggernaut. Uh, when, when, when I first started want to get into Muay Thai, right, I, 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 I went up the second floor of, like, that Boat Key yeah, yeah. Juggernaut yeah, yeah. gym, right? I you remember that, that place. Juggernaut gym. I go up, and then I'm hearing... These loud bangs on the back It's pow, pow, pow. That's like the first time I'm fucking hearing these sounds Because I'm trying to Start to learn how to fight You know how to, 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 to do Muay Thai Because I've never done Muay Thai before And I see uh, This little small I mean at that point in time She was small This is this small size girl Just <laughs> She's fucking, fucking Hammering jack, On the fucking bags And that was Tiffany dude That like she was hammering the back I don't, I don't even think she remembers That I was there But like she was hammering on the back And that was her back then <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, now she's the number one yeah, contender in one. Yeah, I mean she, she's straight up the number one ranked Singaporean yeah, fighter. She in definitely the world. deserves a title shot at this point. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. She that girl she beat was a fucking beast, yeah. man. Her record was insane. Yeah. And then uh, she's actually coming on the podcast this Sunday. Ah, that's Tiffany, great. I Tiffany look will be to on the podcast. That. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. But the but my favorite thing about this is like the community here is tight. There's no like gym stigma where it's like, oh, I'm not gonna go be on Luke's podcast. He's a stronghold, and we're oh, over I've here. Never heard like any people of that. just down to yeah. t- old school martial arts places were like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they, you know, it's like my style is best, or th- my gym is in some kind of rivalry with yours, and like this kind of shit still exists, and you know. Maybe owners of other gyms don't want people to come on like stronghold pocket in my gym. Like I could kind of get it, yeah. and I dealt with a little bit of that with certain people. But for the most part, everybody's down. And the good part about this, at least from my perspective, is that the community here is tight. Yeah. Everybody kind of knows. So even if I get one guy on from another gym or from this gym, like people will kind of check it out and they want to see what's up. And yeah. I'm sure this podcast will be. I mean, really, really I popular. I just hope to be in this for as long as I can. I mean, I I really I I really appreciate the, the the learning experience that comes with it, man. And 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 you know, and it's a beautiful thing. And to be able to be a part of something or be a part of a community. So what's your goal, man? You want to get your black belt? You're gonna stick through this? I mean, oh, you're really vo- fucking ho- vibing on ho- jujitsu and stuff. Hopefully, I mean, the 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 goal is well, the goal is to live to 40 plus. It, to, to be able to see it <laughs> Yeah exactly You know at the rate We're living right now All these GMO foods man You don't know man <laughs> Yeah exactly And Donald Trump Controlling uh, the fucking Nuclear no codes the, 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 the goal is to make it there <laughs> Yeah exactly <laughs> If we get there Then we start yeah, talking If we huh? get there Then hopefully you know I'll, I'll do so I just want to do this um, Yeah continue. I, I like going down to the gym And it, 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 it kind of like Takes you away from from, 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 from your phone <laughs> It takes you away From your phone It's like an hour Two hours away From your phone Dude that's luxury time yeah. bro And your drama Your yeah. bullshit like, like your argument With your wife your, your girlfriend whatever. Your stress yeah. that, That's not Whatever's in your brain When you're getting Fucking politics, strangled whatever, dude whatever, 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 yeah. It's all just You know Just you and your boys And the training And all or, or with, with, with everybody right They're just, just training and, and rolling And that takes your mind Away from a lot of things And, and I enjoy that It's it actually helped me a lot. Uh, it's it, uh, therapeutically. Yeah, yeah. It's that, it's that flow yeah, state, yeah, right? Yeah. Once you hit that flow state, all of your yeah. shit's gone. Especially when you hit the flow state. Well, the flow state always requires some kind of physical thing, yeah. right? Like it's it's yeah. required to for the for the process yeah. to work. And it's like the fact that you're going through this physically rigoring thing, yeah. and you can check all that shit yeah. out, hit that flow state. The time melts yeah. by. Meanwhile, your fucking necks all yeah, rashed yeah. up, and you're fucking yeah. 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 black eye, but you're yeah. laughing with your friends about yeah. it. Like. Yeah. Man, yeah, it's, it's like good stuff. I can never imagine how Nathaniel can go to the gym at like fucking eight a.m. in the morning and leave at like nine p.m. You know, like he spends like he's a workhorse, bro. Thirteen hours in the gym, like, but just me being there two hours, like by myself and vibing, you know, with with the guys and rolling, and then maybe spending some time just just doing some circuits or anything. It just, it, I I kind of get it. I kind of get it. You know, yeah, I kind of get why some. It's 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 really an escape, and I enjoy that. Yeah, enjoy that escape. So yeah, man, I'll, I'll be here for a very long time, and hopefully, hopefully, uh, not have any torn, uh, permanently torn ligaments. You know, <laughs> just make sure you're you're relaxed. That's the number one thing. When you're rolling, relax. As soon as tension goes on the body, falling body weight, boom, that's when the injuries happen. Yeah, yeah. So if you're if you're loose and you you're not always trying to win every single, uh, you know, if like your your body's, you know, even like me when I told you I injured my knee doing the knee slice, I knew there was a lot of tension that I could feel, but I was like I'm on a fucking. If I had just like n- not done that, yeah. 
I would have been fine. Right. If like you're, if if you're someone's mounted and you're a fucking bucket and you're just going yeah. ape shit. Yeah, someone's trying to take you to, and you're sprawling so hard and they got your leg. And if you just like, okay, I'm going to concede this one and then try to get back up. It's like all of those moments where you're like ready to fight to the death for it. That's probably when you're going to. Yeah, because you got to save that for competition. Right? <laughs> yes. And you got to save your body. You will learn this as yeah, you yeah, start yeah, to train yeah. more and more. You just can't keep going like that. If you want to train for longevity, yeah. you need to pick and choose your moments when to explode. Yeah. Pick and choose sometimes who you roll with. If you know that that person injures people or they're spazzy or whatever, yeah. like, you know, roll with them in certain times, but other times be like, nah, dude, I'm not going to do it. Like, yeah. it, this is just how you got to sustain yourself to get to where you're 40 and 50 and still rolling. Damn, and, and also the jujitsu guys, they look good at that 40. And I, I, I always want to be the good looking 40 year old. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I yeah, it, yeah. I don't want right to be the raggedy old 40, 40 year old uncle. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Ew. You and me are both Ew. bald, dude. So we gotta we gotta yeah, work man. other ways. No, you know no, what I'm no. saying? I, I can't. We can't be bald yeah, and fat yeah, and yeah. out of shape. It's just harder because we're bald, and now we gotta work on the rest of us. <laughs> I know exactly. It's not good stuff's not coming from here, man. Fuck. All right, All right, All right dude. Let's wrap this All thing right, up, man. Thank you so much for having me on, man. I had a good time. I'm so glad we managed to fucking work this had out. A good time. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, dude. <laughs> I hope things get better, bro. Like, yeah, yeah. Shout out your podcast, yeah, yeah, yeah. bro. Uh, if you guys wanna listen to the more better podcast, uh, it's it's out now. Uh, it's um it's on Spotify. Uh, yeah, it's just me. Uh, either talking about um, a lot of interesting topics or talking to interesting people. So it's a uh, it's a podcast that I put together. You know, oh, well, I put together this podcast before CB, but um, when CB happened is when we really really took off because I put in a lot of energy on it so yeah, you're doing them every day dude almost every day now i mean i got burned out to some point but yeah yeah listen to it uh and uh yeah other than that man you know just hope you guys stay safe and keep on training and and and, and shout out to everybody who is you know absolutely man, absolutely, man. and i'd love to be on your podcast someday oh, yeah. if you ever need a oh, guest yeah. if you ever need a guest bro you yeah, hit me yeah, up anytime yeah, yeah, i'm down yeah. okay we can come on and talk about mma i mean basically same Anything, thing that we're talking about <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can talk about anything, dude. MMA, politics, yeah, yeah, whatever, yeah, man. Yeah, I'm yeah. down for literally yeah, any yeah, conversation. Yeah, there's there's no uh, direction it. that I'm trying to force any conversation. Love to go it, down. love it. All right, everybody. Fuck a fuzz. Thank Whoa. you, my man. Whoa. I appreciate you. This is the Stronghold Podcast, and we are out.